group got themselves arrested, then got themselves free, then went to a pub and drank themselves into unconsciousness. Those who could walk back to the ship did, the rest were carried, uh, namely <clears throat> the big horse guy who had to have like four people carry him. But they all made it back to the boat. Discussion was had, decisions were made, and they have decided to continue on sailing, looking for the lost village of Tavi. You are presently in Data Harbor, and you are on the Dolphin, or Keelboat, which you were recently introduced to. Players, what would you like to do? Set to sail. Okay. Yes. I would like to immediately throw up. Just immediately. <laughs> it's like seasick oh. instantly. I Violently know. vomit. I I I hope I hope Panda's not watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. This this is a ship that you have never run before, Vara, and I believe none of the rest of you have ever sailed before. Yeah, so yeah, Vara will kind of be like a um, mother hen, like running around crazily, like keeping all her chicks in line, like, okay, <laughs> this is how we do it, and remember I taught you how to tie this knot, and oh, you know, like, if you're feeling sick, like, go and have a lay down, it's fine, like, we can, I can run this ship all on my own if I need to, and um, so she's just kind of running back and forth, and eventually she'll kind of settle and, and just, you know, become more comfortable. Uh, standing behind um standing behind the wheel just kind of keeping an eye out on the horizon mm -hmm. she's especially paying attention to the waters um for anything that even begins to look monstrous well you you do have agrios on the ship but anyway uh sure bubo bubo is going to fly up onto the crown of the mast and take roost there looking out uh, Ariana is not feeling well. She is going to go down below decks and find uh, one of the hammocks to keep company. Lemis. There is one thing I wanted to check since I wasn't here last, last session as well. Is right as we set sail, could I have noticed uh, the port city with the, the river? What, what was the phenomenon with, with the, the river flowing upstream instead? Like, it, was there kind of a resolution of any of it in that sense, or is it just ocean and then suddenly there was still? no there was no resolution of it. There was discussion of it, and that is part of well, there were two things that happened first in discussion with the commander of data um he said early before you had reached the city that two rangers had been dispatched to investigate, however. Having found out that the person you were speaking to wasn't actually the commander, uh, who knows? But also, uh, Ariana went to talk to uh, a priest in the Temple of Aros, and that's when she received the Ascending Stone, which I believe... Who has the stone right now? Vara, I believe, has the Ascending Stone? Yeah. Yes. And she was pleading with them to send someone to investigate what was happening so no no news on that at this point on this front but that was what was requested i see uh so so visually what what we still see is just where where the water is supposed to flow out into the ocean it just looks like the ocean is it's kind of flowing, flowing straight in. in the bay the bay is flowing into the river correct okay I think time is sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I think I, uh, told as I as I will uh, be trying to get some fresh air, but then, how rocky are the waves right now? It's actually a fairly calm day. So calm, in fact, the wind is light. There aren't many waves, and most ships that are moving are actually under oar power. Okay. So I'll just walk around and, and immediately, just the first thing, I'll just turn to Vara and just be like, 
that, that this is it, right? The movement. That's 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 all we're gonna have. This is this I could handle for a little bit longer, I think. Um. Yes. No. The waters are quite calm now. I um. I don't want to scare you, uh, but I don't want to be dishonest to you. I mean, if the wind were to pick up or there were any kind of storm, then yes, it would get more tumultuous than this. But ideally, I mean, based on the sky and, and everything I've been looking at, um, this should it should be smooth sailing. The main concern that we have is any issues that... Um, might be going on in the water with with the whole river going the opposite direction and whatnot but i've you know i've got my telescope and i'm keeping an eye out and we'll know of things ideally well in advance before they're near us so we can have time to prepare okay so is it better to be on the deck or underneath um that depends are you talking about during a fight or during a storm i well well i mean during this during a fight i guess we would want to get rid of whatever we're dealing with sure but during a storm i'd say uh i would say below deck is probably best um you have to kind of weigh the odds, right? What are you most comfortable with? Because on deck, obviously you'll see the waves, be more aware of, you know, what's going on, but um, which can be scary, but also nice because you can anticipate the movement of the boat based on what you're seeing. Um, so that's nice. Under deck, you know, you, you're not as, you're not getting rained on, you're not, it's not as visually frightening, but you're also more vulnerable if for some reason we were to spring a leak and you also wouldn't be able to participate in the coming waves. So it depends on if you would like to be ignorant or not. None of that sounds comfortable whatsoever. And neither option is perfect, but um, uh, no matter what, I, I, I think we'll be quite all right. And obviously, if things were to get severe enough to where I, we're sticking fairly close to the coastline. So if it seemed like a very dangerous storm was on the horizon or any issues were to pop up, I would I would simply try to find a place to, to anchor and wait it out close to the shore. I'm not going to, you know, we're, obviously we want to be as quick as possible in this journey, but I'm not going to force us into waters that are, are unnecessarily dangerous. If we need to take our time, we'll take our time. Yeah, we we could do that. Um, if you need any help, any help that I could help with, at least, just let me know. I need to do things to uh, keep my mind off everything. Of course. Um. Well, I think. Let's see. Keeping track of supplies, um, checking the map, making sure we're staying on course at night. We'll be kind of star mapping. Um, your hair would be useful for that. Comparisons, see what kind of time we're making. Um, but, uh, well, I think one of the best things you can do is um, busy yourself with talking to everyone else. For the most part, once we actually are just steady on course, uh, it's not too hard of work to be on a ship. It, it's really only a one person, maybe two person job. It's really just the setting sail and stopping that takes the full crew. So just talk to each other and, you know, have fun, prepare for what we might expect when we reach Shelby. And I, I think that'll, that'll keep spirits high and keep your attention on other things. And I, I think you're a lovely person to talk to, so I'm sure everybody would be happy to to talk to you and, and take that respite from probably their own fears, too. I, I appreciate that. I, of course. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll try to. And then I'm just gonna, in the middle of the sentence, walk below deck. <laughs> All right, uh, bye. <laughs>
And then Agrio sort of wobbly trots up uh, a moment later, looking slightly panicked. How does anyone walk like this? How are you all walking around? And don't give me that shit about finding my sea legs. You only had to find two of them. Hmm. You don't have to be walking around, Agrios. You can, you can just find a place to Ugh. sit. <laughs> sort of like finds a corner and awkwardly <laughs> curls his legs under him. Like loafs like a cat. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yes. Almost exactly. How about Adrastos and Tikaros? What are they up to at the moment? Um, Adrastos is having the time of his life because he spent time with Vara learning about ships. And like, so where like there's two or three like human sailors, you know, pulling down ropes and things, he's just by himself, just tying stuff up, just not really like trying to flex on them, but he's being athletic and having the time of his life. If they're like, there's something up there, he's climbing the mast. He's just enjoying himself enjoying the sea air. This is his first time on a boat and he is the polar opposite of Tully. He is just like a, a kid in a candy store. I think Tikaros is exactly the same. She's like yelling at Agrios, just be more graceful, look at me. And she's mirthful leaping around the deck. And she's not, not strong, but she's doing all the dexterous, annoying little tidying ropes tidying ropes and Vara what does this rope do what does this rope do trying to learn everything about this ship it's for the sail it's also for the sail most of the reference that sails <laughs> and prime prime is standing at the back uh trying to handle the rudders on the rear of it because again this is a river boat not an open sea boat and he's as little as the boat moves Again, you are facing a current that is pulling into the river as you're trying to make your way into the harbor, and there is not much wind. Um, um, Vara, um, we seem to be not making headway, and um, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but Tikaros, I believe if they're, if they're laying on the ground, they're ropes, but if they're tied to something, they're a line. Um, yes, that would be correct. Uh, which? That we're not moving? Uh, I didn't realize we were not moving. I just, um, and I'll kind of search, scan the coast and kind of try to compare the waters and look up to the sky and see if that sounds accurate. Yep. Give me a perception check. I always... I always play characters who know about boats, and then Moira did not know about boats. <laughs> it's no problem. That's what the dice are for. <laughs> I got a 16 for the perception check. All right. Uh, you, you do the old stick your finger up in the air, but you know, sure, you're, yeah. you're usually wet anyway. So little it doesn't flag going. Uh, But there <laughs> is a wind, but it is a slight wind, and the current being drawn in, once you get out on the open water, it looks like you'll be okay. But where you're at right now, there is just not enough force from the wind to overcome the current that is drawing you into the river mouth. Mm, like fighting, fighting an upstream. Um, well, does it seem like something just a kind of adjustment of the sails were, would fix or... Um... Would we need you to have to you have to have enough wind to... you have to have enough wind to get that momentum out there and you're just not seeing it and other ships that you see if they're coming in they're just basically gliding in on the current anyone who is going out including small fisher craft they're rowing sure do we have is is the ship outfitted with oars to where we Ab could absolutely row? absolutely there are oars and also the way that the rudders are on a riverboat, on a killboat like this, mm -hmm. if you move them back and forth, you can almost use them as an oar. It gives you like a, a bit of a sway. Kind of, okay. Yeah, it gives sure. you a sway in the boat when you do that, but it will allow you to propel forward some. Perfect. Okay. Um, I would kind of, uh, let's see. I just think maybe I have like a little bell or something near me, near the end. Um, near the wheel and I'll just kind of summon everyone somehow and just kind of all right um 
Prime has made a very astute observation. Um, I got caught up in everyone else's excitement, I'm afraid, so I didn't notice it until now, but uh, the current that we're going against is rather strong. So if everyone is willing and able, uh, it would be best if we try to, um, I'm gonna adjust the sails a little bit and maybe, maybe change our direction uh, slightly. We might go a little less in the direct, uh, direct line that we're traveling and maybe take it at an angle to try to get more wind. But um, if we could have most of us on oars and then an extra person on the rudder. Um, Ooh, I, I can show the rudder. That would be great. I can show you what I'm looking for. And then um, if anyone else could go ahead and put in some, some rowing power, that would be lovely. I, I don't, we wouldn't need to maintain it for the whole trip. Just, just till we get past this, um, this incoming current in this this delta area of course i'd be happy to take up a round on the bench and so adrastos just sits down on the bench and just mm -hmm. kind of scoots everyone off of it and just a la ajax from troy is just one one guying the <laughs> you had a picture of our ship right is the um yeah are I the or seats are the or seats below deck? Like, is it there? Like there are not. Out of there the are side, not or? particularly or seats for doing this. Okay. But we'll say that you can bring a box or something up on to to uh, take a look at that. And does it extend out from the side below deck, or would it be? Um, it would be from the top, top deck. deck. Yeah, okay. It'd be from the top. So we'll try and zoom out on the ship a little bit here. Or... So just just because he's an overachiever. Is the boat sized enough where Adrastos could stand in the middle of the deck with an oar in each hand? Or is it massively oversized for that? I think it's going to be a wee bit big for that. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what we've got here. So hold on just a second. I'm not the, saying the map that is actually accurate. Says... Okay. <laughs> okay. A little bit big. All right. So yeah, he'll just big. take one. Yeah. He'll take one. And the map is actually sized appropriately for the ships, by the way. So. Very nice. I think, or did I size it for the other? Well, whatever. The ship's big. <laughs> Fair enough. It's big enough. I think you'd probably have to have a person on each side of it. And in the in the back, you still have Prime on, on one of the, the rudders. Uh, Tikaros, I said you were going to... I think you said you were going to take one of the other ones? Okay. Yep, for sure. Oh, uh, let's see. What is Agrios going to do? At least he can raise morale. <laughs> he can cast spells to, to make everybody feel better about what they're doing. That, that's really going to make good for us. All right. Uh, uh -huh. So, Adrasto, since you're doing the primary rowing effort here, um, you mean that probably help Ro, right? Yeah, you could. All right, I'll help Ro. Why not? Oh. Okay. Yeah, so and, to, and to, to correct, shown... yeah, to correct, it's times 10 on the boat. It's 20 by 60. So mm. I don't know what that came up. Yeah, that says 200. So it's 10 times what the actual size is. The measurement. Okay. Because I have, I have it on the same map as the river just to make it easy to track. Can I assist with the check then? Yes. So do that with advantage, right. Adrastos. And I also just give it a bardic inspiration is seeing seeing mm -hmm. my friends. Do you know what? I'll spirit. also cast guidance. Get a Sing a shanty, Tolly. Okay. Do it all. So okay. so I, I've taken my advantage. I'm adding a D4. And a D6. And a D6. Okay. Hold on. So with all of that, it's 19. That is excellent. You, the two of you grab the oars and, and give a, a mighty push and it just lurches forward. I mean, <laughs> kind, of, kind of like <laughs> off the bar. He just kind of, the back kind of goes and comes in. And so Tikaros, uh, you and Prime have to get in sync as you are pushing the rudder back and forth to get that wave going in there. So please make a, you can do either acrobatics or athletics with advantage because Prime is going to assist. Ooh, nice. I'm going to do acrobatics and try and like just make it look really fancy and cute at the same time. And I'm going to give myself a little cheer. 
You can do it. You like steering. You are the center of it all. Oh, that worked. She got a natural 20 with that advantage. Yes. Nice. So Plus, the two of you. That's a 23 yep. all up. Nice. So the two of you, Prime and you, work well together as you are able to get this thing going and you are able to offset the sway motion along with the rowing and actually get the boat on a straight tack heading out into the harbor. Very good. Yeah. And once you cross over that boundary point where the current draw just kind of gets split out over all of the ocean, so it's, it's quite minor at that point, um, you pick up speed as you continue to row and navigate the ship down the way. So how, do you, how fast do you want to go, Vara? And I will say that, Vara, you did a perception earlier, so you're pretty in tune with what's happening on the ship. And you realize this is a shallow draft boat in the first place. So being out here on the ocean, moving at speed, it is a little less stable. You're getting, even on a smooth day, you're getting the rocking from the effort of rowing, from the effort of moving the oars, from the effort of moving the rudder. It's not super stable. Um, so it's going to tilt and you're going to feel the yaw a bit more than you would uh, if there was weight down in the, the cargo bay, which there is not. There's very little down there. So what would be my potential courses of action then? I guess that's not for me to decide. I'm sorry, say that again. So what would be my potential courses of action? I... It's up to you to oh, yeah. set the pace and determine, uh, do you want to yeah. continue moving at top speed? You can have them slack up on the oars and stabilize a little. It's entirely up to you. Do you want to make Let's time? Let's do it! Go fast! Or do you want it to be? <laughs> I think... I get, would I be able to kind of... I think Vara's main question in her head is, um, is it a sprinting distance? You know what I mean? Like, do I feel like if we go at a sprint pace that by the time we're tired of the sprint pace, we'll be done? Or does it feel like it should be more of a, a marathon type pace because it'll take a while to get through uh, Looking... what we're fighting against? Going down the map of, of where you're headed, uh, you're going to have to craft to cross the whole of Miletus Harbor, which is about 12 miles. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, from there, you'll be entering the river, and that's going to be about another 13 to 14 miles to make it over to Miletus Bay. Sure. Yeah, I, I think especially with potential threat, um, I don't want them to tire themselves out or cause any exhaustion. So I would go ahead and let them know, like, hey, like we're we're going um we're going at great pace. This is really helping. You you can actually um I, I don't want to fatigue any of you. We will need to contain the, continue this pace for um quite a few miles. Uh, and was that was that like nautical miles or was that actual miles? Mile miles at this point. Just whatever miles. <laughs> okay. Um we, we, we'll need to maintain this pace for for quite a while. So um, set the pace that you feel is is, is maintainable for you. And, and if we need to, we can go ahead and uh, row in shifts. Two at a time, maybe Ariana Drastos for a while and then Agrios and Tali for a while. I'd be happy to come down and row um, as long as someone's willing to keep a lookout of, of deck. I think Adrasso, you were the main one who learned the most um, regarding ships, so you'd be at the helm if I were to come down here and row in your stead. Does that all sound oh, okay? Very well. How much help I'll be, but uh, I'll try. Yeah. Oh, I, I think you're all doing stunning. Just don't wear yourselves out. It's a, it's a long voyage still, but this is—we're doing great. 
So my, my idea here is you're in the bay and moving. So this is the time for you as players to learn how the ship works and how the navigation goes. So that's why I'm being annoyed about some of these things is oh, sure. so that you will know later when you need the ship for something, you'll have an idea of things you can do and what you can do. So cool. at this point, you have two people rowing. You have two people manning the rudders which is also providing some motivation, steerage and some motivation. Uh, and you also have the sails at full. The sails are yes. not catching a lot of wind because there just hasn't been a lot of wind this day. And as you make your way out of the river mouth into Melitus Harbor, how far from the shore are you going to be? Um, I think... I think no matter what it needs to be in sight um not necessarily by the naked eye but at least by the telescope so uh however far away that it's like just almost almost like parent parent toddler right like i'm gonna let them roam a little bit but i need to be able to see them at all times does that make sense <laughs> okay so I mean, you can see the shore from quite a ways away. The farther out you go, the less you're going to have any impact from tide and current. Yeah. And, you know, any ripples there. You'll get smoother water, faster flow a little bit farther out. So, 500 meters? Yeah. A kilometer? Okay. So, about 500 meters out. Um, you see that there are some other ships passing it at distance, uh, headed both your direction and the other. Uh, in either case, there are people rowing. So it just seems to be a very quiet, still day. Your sails are drooping, so they've got a little bit of fill in them, but they're hanging low at this point. So you would either have the choice to take the sails down, which they're not causing you any negative. If if they were blowing back the other way and you were going fast enough to cause a negative wind, you might want to lower the sails. But the wind would be at your back if there was any. So you were good to leave them up if you'd like and continue to row and rock along merrily. Uh, normal pace with a full wind for this keelboat would be about three miles an hour. But... As you are rowing and there's not much wind, I'm going to say you're probably running, if you're not really expending yourself, you're probably running at about a mile an hour. And All you right. seem to have, right? You watch as the Four Winds Plateau slowly goes by as you make your way down the harbor. Uh, most other ships uh, maintain a good distance from you. Nobody wants to be right on top of each other out, out in the water, not knowing what's going on, who's an innocent ship. And then you've got an odd-looking crew. You, you have a crew that doesn't match what normally would be on a ship, so you may look a little uh, pirate-ish to some people. So you'll have to keep that in consideration as well. Good. Those are the kind of people I want to attract, so that's fine. <laughs> we are. Oh, well, cool. Do we have any kind of signaling flags um, that we could put up? I know sometimes pirates speak, you put up like a, a white semaphore. flag or whatever. Just, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. Thinking, you're thinking semaphore for actual yeah. communication, or then you have your, your flag of nationality or your flag of purpose as well. Sure. Yeah. Do um, we have that? That was not mentioned as being provided when the ship was uh, was put in store, so I would say no. Say there we isn't don't. anything particular. Is there? Do I know that there's a common like? Um, I'm thinking like Sea of Thieves video game. <laughs> like <laughs> it, it's like you know, if someone were a threat, usually they keep their all their lanterns off when they like sail at night. You, but then the people who are friendly will keep all their lights on. So you have years of sailing experience as a character. So I think you definitely would know these type of things. You would know what to look out for. Okay, cool. Yeah, any any way that I can make us appear friendly, I would definitely make sure I maintain that, whether that's keeping keeping lanterns lit or or having the flag in a certain position. If well, okay. I guess you know, or, or yeah. any kind of markings that I could potentially add. 
your your so midday sales or something like that. Yeah, your 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 early morning to midday. So probably the first thing that you could do is make sure that the ballista is secured and set and maybe even covered rather than visible on deck because why would you have your ballista visible on deck unless you were getting ready to use it? Sure. So that would be one thing that would probably be a good sign to uh quiet it down a bit. As as you're doing all these things, like adding markings, trying to look as peaceful as possible, Agrios is constantly giving his input, and all of it is completely counterproductive. It's just like put blood on the sails. He wants it to look as yeah, he wants it to look as as aggressive as possible. Why are we called the dolphin? We should be called the killer whale. The shark. <laughs> well, see if you'd have kept I'm the thinking... shark's head, you could have put that on the front of the boat. Ah. Uh... I'm thinking angry red markings. I mean, Adrastos does still have a shark's jaw on his shoulder. If anybody sees a giant lion true. with a shark jaw on his shoulder. <laughs> Permission to paint a red skull on the ship. She um, didn't say permission, no. Permission not. <laughs> or it definitely takes a moment because like in her mind, like, based on her previous cruise and the fun she's had, she's like, mm, well, permission, let me think about it. It was funny, but no, we really shouldn't do that. <laughs> I'm going to veto. Um, perhaps on the trip back, if we're feeling more confident, we can do something like that. But I think we're, like you said, you've got four sea legs to get used to, so let's try not to start uh, a war. <laughs> <laughs> would not like that but a, a war sounds pretty great though like really give us something to do sure but we are already ending up in scenarios where we have to battle things without attracting it so i really don't want to double down and attract even more than we're already just stumbling into does that make sense <laughs> <sighs> No, but I'll respect it. Sure. Well, maybe maybe you can spear some fish later and get some of that aggression out. How about that? Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> if only I could stand up straight with all the rocking back and forth this thing does. It'll come with time. Give it a week. So you have a 12-mile journey. You're moving a mile an hour. <clears throat> how long are you going to go? Are you going to row for, are you intending to row the full 12 hours? Are you going to take shifts? How do you plan to break this up? And who's watching ahead, watching the sea, watching the ships around? So think, think of this as adventuring in a deep, dark dungeon and you know what not creatures are around you. How would you handle this as a party? I would try to find where it feels like there's some sort of balance. So not the front, not the back, I guess somewhere in the middle, and stare out into the horizon as far as possible, hoping that there's something, that there isn't anything that just comes out of the horizon. But that's where my perception is going to be. And probably on, on left or right, left side, let's say left side. Okay. Or which, let's say left, left side towards gonna... the shore. So, yeah. so I'll... Yeah. I'll look towards the right. Okay. I, I can kind of see from the way you were talking about Ptolemaeus, maybe you're hugging on hugging the mast a bit. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> like it's basically I'm just like both both hands like holding on to whatever and like low stance and everything, trying to trying to keep from moving too much. Because mm -hmm. of their conversation uh last session, which would have been last night, Adrastos is a hundred percent taking his cues from Vara here. So whatever Vara says to him is exactly what he's doing. And if he doesn't know what he's doing, he's just looking at Vara like, okay, now what? <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, I'll kind of be continuously guy. I basically, without trying to let it on, um, as Vara kind of goes around and tries to relieve ships or correct any, oh, actually, if you row with this, you know, angle, that you get a better momentum without as much muscle strain. Um, so as she kind of goes and nitpicks and, and checks in and, and takes over she'll kind of be talking 
to address us about just certain things. And, oh, well, in this situation, and trying to make it seem like she's just making pleasant conversation. But in reality, she's like, she's making a dress to someone where in crisis, like if Farah were to be knocked out or something, he would know what to do. But she's like, but she's like veiling that conversation to just be like, oh, casual chatter. <laughs> Very good. I need those who are rowing to make constitution checks, please. And we'll see uh, how long you're able to keep up this rowing. Just to clarify, a check, not a save. That's correct. Just a check. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> I That's not a good sound. <laughs> I didn't roll well. Twelve. Six. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that is not well at all. <laughs> well, the all good right, news that, for the good news for is Agrios real. is he do, he does not wear out as quickly as Adrastos does. Maybe it's because Adrastos is having to split his time between learning how to run a boat as well as as rowing. But uh, definitely after a couple of hours of of the rowing, um, Adrastos appears to be weakening, and Agrios as he is rowing, the the ship's actually beginning to turn a little bit. And Adrastos, uh, I, I don't know which side of the ship you were on. I'm going to assume you were on the shore side, so you were on the left. And so the, the ship, the boat starts to kind of drift a little bit closer towards shore. As Agrios is pushing hard on the oar, Adrastos is slackening up a bit. Uh, as I see this, can I, or like as I am looking on the horizon and feel this, can I go and try to help Adrastos? Oh, absolutely. Uh, row. Is that a, would that be a athletics or? Uh, yeah, you can do athletics. If this doesn't work, I have a weird, it's not the way this is supposed to work, but I'm going to go for it idea. So I don't <laughs> help. Right. I don't help whatsoever. I got a zero. Uh, is it... <laughs> okay, so, so here's my plan. Can I use action surge to try to get a burst of energy as a fighter? Can I spend an action surge to do that? A second wind. Or second wind. I have that too. Yeah, I, I would think second. I normally reserve those for combat, but you're doing something strenuous and we're, it's not going to, you're not in physical danger. So okay. I'm fine with it because I think it, it works good for play. So I will expend my second wind and roll another can, constitution check. Can I can I help him out with that? Can I cast a spell on him? Well, I got an 18. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, you got an 18. <laughs> right. So, Adrastos, you, you realize what's happening and you pick up the pace a little bit and kind of start evening out. But again, you guys have been doing this for a couple of hours nonstop rowing. So at some point, so, you are going to wear out. On the outside, Adrastos is like, ah, oh, I just... Got to get back in my stride, but on the inside, he's like, can't let Agrios win. <laughs> <laughs> That's the key. All right. Prime is going to look over at Tikaros, and um, we've been at this for a couple of hours. If you're tired, I can, I can manage both. The current's not so strong now. Well, I'm not so tired. I'm just bored. And... Prime is going to take his side of the rudder and lift it up and lock it in the up position so it's just out of the water. And he's going to come over and do the same to yours. <gasps> what are you doing? I don't know that we're helping. We're going. We're going in the right direction. Take a break. Relax. Okay. That sounds great. And she'll go annoy Vara for a bit. Dance around you, help you with your little ministrations. As soon as you're okay. gone, he goes back and he unlocks the two of them <laughs> and he starts managing them himself. <laughs> Excellent. I love you, Prime. I say <laughs> over my shoulder as I run away. He would blush, but he's metal, so he can't. So uh seeing as how I failed utterly to help do anything other than <laughs> watch. Can I at least make a perception check to see if there's anything, or like, or or have to 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 see Absolutely. if there's anything on the horizon? You were you were the one who said you were doing watch, so please do. Yep. 
Uh, okay, that's a little bit better. That's a 21. Uh, as you look out, you really don't see a lot happening. You, you see some other ships in the distance again, rowing. But you notice all of a sudden, well, it's almost like you got that feeling of somebody going, as you face towards the back of the ship, and you look up, and you see as the cell fills out. And the ship suddenly just kind of picks up a little speed as the sails have, have filled. And you apparently have a wind now that is beginning to carry you forward. I'll immediately turn to Vara and just be like, that means we're catching wind, right? That, that right there. We have a little bit of wind right there. Yes. Looks pretty good. Well, we don't have to roll as much anymore. Not like I could help anyways. Uh, and, um, yeah, uh, do I feel the, the ship moving any faster? Do I? It, it's definitely got a little bit of pace because you have people rolling and you have the wind. Um, and I will say that Adrastos and Agrios, you will notice as well that you seem to be moving a little bit quicker. Time is going to call out from the back. Um, Vara, um, if we've caught wind, should we be guided by the sail? Um, should I lock the rudders? Oh, um, yes, no, I think let's all take a break. Let's, let's focus on, on just carrying this wind and, and everyone rest for a little bit. So Agrios and Adrastos, do you pull in the oars? No! In a show of defiance. <laughs> yes, I, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to stop. <laughs> yes. You pull those in, and you continue to sail now under wind power. And Ptolemaeus, as you've been keeping the watch, you notice uh, you're coming up uh, on another boat ahead of you. And uh, it's a six crew rowing, so three oars on either side. And their sails flat as you are catching up with them. And as they're rowing, you go sailing by under wind power. All right. Okay. So, not very familiar with the sea thing, but more familiar with, with nature. And Vara, that's not normal. We're getting wind, they're not. And they actually kind of look, and you can see as they all, you know, they're rowing, and they kind of watch as you go by. Um. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's probably a bad sign. Um, admittedly, though, there's not much we can do to fight it. I mean, we could row backwards, but that also wouldn't help us, so... Um, we could take it as a sign that we're being quickly hurtled toward destruction, or perhaps one of the gods is finally favoring us. Someone's piety is being paid off. Can I maybe call upon Athreos in some kind of way to see if I think this is... Or, oh, Athreos. Um, yes. Could you... Could you maybe consult your bones and see if this is a positive or a negative wind in our sails? Well, let's see. The bones are normally about actions that we take. Mm. But... Should we fight? Or should we allow ourselves... Is it safe to allow ourselves to continue in the direction that the wind's providing? Maybe mm. that? Very well. But again, it has to be a personal thing for you, Agrios. Let me see. Uh, yeah, that I plan to take within the next 30 minutes. Okay. Mm. All right, and I have to think that I don't want to get into fights, right? That's what we're, we're assuming. Yes, that would be better. Oh. 
don't I don't want trouble. I don't want fights. I want smooth sailing. Mm. Okay. I shall consult the bones. You're gonna be all right. We shall see. Uh, and he is going to ask the bones what Vara asked him. Is it is it safe for is it safe for Agrios to uh, let this boat follow the wind or be carried by the in this direction by the wind? In in the time frame on this is uh, roughly the next thirty minutes is when you'd be taking an action. That Rough, this would judge, roughly the so. next thirty minutes. Uh, so I would say wheel. The bones say wheel, which is good. So you are now what? traveling. At the max speed of this boat, you are traveling at three miles per hour. All right, we'll uh, we'll assume that this is a blessing for now. But um, so you... or now, everyone rest and be on guard. This kind of feels like a secret. We're researchers now. I'm gonna go look at these magic sails. Yeah, I mean, if there's anything visible about the wind, you can notice some kind of difference. Obviously, if you see any fingerprints, please let me know. Yeah. Perhaps I should come with you then. Yeah, let's go. Perfect. So you are investigating the main cell? Is that what I She can investigate. Agrios is going to cast Detect Magic. Okay. <laughs> yep, I'm investigating. All right, so give me an investigation check, please. Six. I'm a good researcher. The sails uh, appear to be made of cloth. Uh, they appear to be tied on at the top and the bottom of uh, bars across the mast. Uh, and there appears to be wind in them. That's that's amazing. Kind of of your <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be an interesting one for detect magic. Uh huh. Give me an idea. Tell me how you're approaching this. Tell me how your detect magic is being done and where you are on the ship and where you're looking. Um. He is, I mean, he is definitely looking specifically at the sails with okay. Tikaros. Um, how is it being done? So are you behind, are you on the back of the ship looking forwards or in the fore of the ship looking aft? I was thinking back of the ship looking forwards. Okay. All right. As you look up at the sails and detect magic begins to, to, coalesce the, the energies around for you to see. Um, you notice a glow uh, around Vara um, in whatever pocket or pouch she is carrying the uh, sending stone. That would be visible. Okay. But you also notice these colorful swirls, almost like you can see the wind as it comes in billows as it hits the back of the sail and curves so it's like you can see there is a wind specifically coming in and hitting the sails on your ship and the tech magic does say i learn its school of magic if any there is no particular school of magic for this one ah, you just ah. you just recognize if anything it would give you a feeling of um, celestial okay Ah, I can see the wind. Tis magical indeed. Though I do not believe it sources any spell. We might take it for exactly as Vara said, a blessing. Hmm. 
though from whom I am concerned. Well, what if it's from Murgus? Should we put a, like a, like a blood stain on the deck? I can just like put a little blood stain with my magic fingers. Well, Farrell won't going, have to know. I'm not going to say no to a good blood stain. Ah! Oh. <laughs> I just make a little blood stain on the deck near us. You like that? Will... <laughs> you like look over and Vara's just kind of standing like ten feet away, like <laughs> she wants to say something, but she's not, and she's but she's clearly watching you do this. <laughs> uh, it's only going to last for an hour, Vara. Just an hour. All right. We'll be pirates oh. for an hour. <laughs> and she like, want to be... turns and busies herself with something else. <laughs> I want to be clear in this. Uh, you were doing this in in the name of Mogus, I believe? No, you just specifically... for fun. For, in well, the name specific... of Agrius, my friend. You had specifically invoked Mogus as, as maybe this is for Mogus and we should therefore put this blood mark on oh, the Oh, heck was no. That That's no, I don't like Mogus. No, I don't like yeah. Mogus. I like Are you saying Andreas. this out loud? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get a picture here. <laughs> yeah, she's having this internal argument with herself. In, I don't inter like Mogus. Internally, you're like, oh, this isn't from Mogus. I don't like anything about Mogus. And Agrios yeah. comes, is meanwhile, over the bloodstain going, Lord Mogus! <laughs> <laughs> See what your children have wrought. <laughs> this is in the name of Friendship and tricks. This blood is spilt for you. Friendship and tricks. <laughs> Bloodlust and chaos. <laughs> Destruction and death. <laughs> you know what? I'm not I'm not gonna roll for this. I would like both of you to roll persuasion for me, please. Oh cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm excited. Persuasion. Oh, I'm okay at this if I don't roll. I'm not me. okay at it. Let's see how I do. <laughs> yes. Natural 18. <gasps> I got a natural 18 too. Are you kidding? But I have plus oh. six to persuasion. Yeah, all right. Fair enough. You get that one. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so, uh, to clarify, just to make sure I'm I'm getting this correct now, Agrios is praising Mogus for the wind. Tikaros mm -hmm. is just saying it's a wonderful wind, correct? Yeah, she's like invoking the spirit of friendship and doing something beautiful for her friends because she just she's loving this group of people she's found herself with. She's trying mm -hmm. to make Agrios happy in this moment. Excellent. All right, as you continue on in the this this praising of friendship and this extolling of Mogus continues. Suddenly, the wind changes. The warmth of this wind that has been oh, no. blowing becomes chill. The sky darkens. And a cloud forms dark over your boat. And you hear the rumblings as a storm begins. Lightning Icarus, I think flashes. we made Thassa angry. Lightning flashes from the cloud, striking the mast. No. Well, that's not Bobu. the one who's angry. And it was me who did it. Bobu's <laughs> arms are wings flap out to a full extension and he plummets to the deck and hits it with a thud. Oh, Can no. I try to catch him? Sure, absolutely. Give me a dexterity. Okay. Or athletics I'll, or acrobatics, I'll put it that way. I'll do athletics. Um, 14. Suck it, Karanos! <laughs> you, catch, you catch Bobu as he falls, so you save him from smacking into the deck. But his, he's just kind of like stuck, you know, not moving. Um, okay, well, in the spirit of who addressed us this as a person, he is going to catch Bubo, and he is going to growl at the sky. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you growl at the sky, and suddenly the water around the boat begins 
to bubble and boil and waves begin to hit. What's unusual is normally you catch a wave from one direction, but you're getting waves that are hitting on the boat from both sides and they come up the edge of the boat almost as like fingers coming up the side and clinching, like fists oh. pounding against mm -hmm. the edge of the boat. Don't and the boat that. begins oh, to no. rock. Oh no, oh no. Tigros like she goes down to her knees and she's like, oh no, did I do this? And she's gonna remember what those creatures in the forest were doing and remember her core. And she's gonna kneel down and do this little palms over motion to the skies. Interesting. And and she's just gonna whisper under her breath, I'm sorry, Crefix. I'm sorry. Secrets, quietness, no other praising. And she's just going to do that for a minute. Give me a persuasion check, please. Wow. Oh, Would you're all right, too, Thassa. <laughs> <laughs> Would this be a moment where I could guide myself in this check? Or is it just too fraught? Question. Uh, I'll give you advantage on it because I think you're pretty dedicated Ooh. to what you're doing. Okay. Fully believing it in my heart. Persuasion. 16. All right. Agrios, what are you up to at this point, aside from trying to yell at every other god and piss them off too? Oh, he's most he's mostly <laughs> yelling at Karanos and Thassa. Those are the two that he's he 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 thinks that they're just getting pissed off because one guy one guy wants to talk about Mogus and you get all <laughs> uppity. <laughs> Um, what is he up to? That's a good question. Um, let's see. Is there any, is there any, any way I can try and magically steady the boat? No, I can enhance my own abilities and try and do it myself. But has, has, uh, although Vara has been teaching Adrastos, has anyone taught me or told me, given me any instruction on how to like help in this emergency situation? Uh, everyone knows the basics. Um, Adrastos is the main person who knows, like, plan D, plan F, plan H, but y'all all know plan A, B, and C. Um, gotcha. But VAR, VAR would be kind of watching. You can tell VAR is not stressed yet, if that is any indicator for you. She's kind of watching Tikaros in this moment and seeing what's happening because it definitely does seem like there's a god piece going on. And as someone who has been at sea for a long time, we can do all of the emergency preps, but if there's a god situation going on, we need to we need to write that with the gods. There's nothing we can do on the ship that's going to fix that. So so if you look to Vara for guidance, she's she's watching Tikar um Tikaros very intently and taking her cue of whether she needs to start taking us. Uh, to shore off of what happens with Tikaros. Okay. But if you ask Vara uh, what you can do, she'll she'll give you just basic like safety, like you know, if you need to get under deck, uh, if you if you row, if you find a rhythm with you know the the current, you can try to row to lessen the rocking and stuff like that. Listen, so if the gods are pissed off, is, is there is there is there anything we have on board that would make a good sacrifice. Sometimes you got to ask yourself that question. <laughs> Sometimes you just... got to ask what I can throw off. Well, I'm not talking about throwing off. I'm talking about a a, a, a decent sacrifice. No, I know, I know. Just, you know, we. I assume. We, did we bring any livestock on board or anything like that? Probably no, not. No, you you did not mention any livestock or anything of the sort. Oh man. All right, so it's just so, people then, and mostly just us, just, right? Yep, it's just all of you. Just us, okay. The None waves begin, the waves increase, and the ship begins to rock more and more, and where it had looked like fingers going up on the side, like someone hitting the side of the boat, now when they hit, they go up, and as they come down, it's like they're curving over and hitting the side of almost getting a grip on the lip on the edges of the ship as it begins to become nice more like and that. more violent. A grip on the lip on the edges of the ship. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I got bars. 
<laughs> oh. Um, Tamshu the roving rapper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um uh, I Tali in this situation, I feel can I even though I I am feeling a little like sick still from the situation, I think there's another emotion that I'm I'm more uh it's more welling up towards like kind of like almost a hateful anger in the situation right now. But can I pretend to just still be just sick and just wander around trying to 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 really dig into that but then uh i'll just kind of be looking at the situation with with what's happening with tikaros and and the bloodstain and just like kind of having a little bit more taking in kind of the situation with with the water the waves the broken mass and is feeling quite upset like in in terms of like hateful anger all right well the ship is going to begin to buff it quite a bit so what i'm going to need is a dexterity check from everyone except tikaros Ooh. this is gonna go well so tikaros what you are feeling is as the ship begins to buffet and rock back and forth and you're in this position, you almost feel as though someone had placed their hands on your shoulders and were holding you in place. Wow. Okay. That's a six. <laughs> Another six and a two. <laughs> oh my goodness. We fucked. I'm very strong, but not very. Vara, how is? Right what did you get, Vara? This is going to be interesting. For, did... It was a con. Sorry, it was a constitution. Or uh, dex? no dexterity. Dex. dex. Yeah. I got a twenty. All right. I am just shocked. Prime actually rolled better than everybody else except oh, Vara. Wonderful. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. So unfortunately. Uh, Prime is going to hold on to the rudder, so he's got balance. Vara, uh, you're able to maintain, you know, footing and probably grab onto something firm. As the boat sure. rises up in the water, lists very hard to the side and slams back down, almost to the point that the side goes under to capsize. But what is going to happen is Ptolemaeus, Adrastos, and Agrios are thrown from the deck into the water. Oh, I said that wasn't going to happen. I'm a oh, liar. No. I've been made a liar. <laughs> How quickly soon, can we throw ropes? As soon as Agrios touches the water, as soon as one point of him hits the water, the boat is just calmly sat, <laughs> and the storm stops. <gasps> Wow. Hey, I was the jinx. All right. Well, that's concerning. Um, ropes. I'm throwing ropes over. I think for I'd only okay. have one thought. I think I, this is actually a situation where I would be com like internally communicating with Krufix. Okay. And basically, just the irony of the situation of. Did you really just rescue me for this to happen once more? Oh. I've kept your secrets. The entirety of the life that you've saved. And I've revealed nothing. And I've only done so in your name. Albeit away from your life. This is it then. And that's like the only thought before as I'm kind of like sinking. because. Tully doesn't notice one whatsoever. Very good. Well, Adrastos uh -huh. does, and he will try to save Tully. <laughs> if he sees Tully not coming up, just... Okay. Uh, do any of you have a swim speed? I don't I, believe so. I think my background does give me a swim speed. You might. That's what I want to check. I couldn't remember. Um, Your background? Mm-hmm. I'm an athlete. Oh, okay. uh, Vara's shaping water, by the way. She's going to go ahead and freeze a pat. Like, she just immediately, like, 
turns into a different person, like goes over very determinedly and is like very deftly manipulating the water, trying to get them closer to the boat, um, trying to kind of edge them closer. And once they're close enough to where Tigris, because I know Tigris was what throwing ropes, um, I'm going to go ahead and freeze a patch of water. Like there's like a little ice shelf um, that they could climb up onto uh, that can reach the ropes. Okay. I, I would say that you can shape a five foot cube yeah. of water. So there's a limited amount of space that you're going to be able to do this. And they were not standing next to each other directly when they were thrown off. So I'm not going to say that they're right within, you know, an, an immediate five foot. But the other thing, you're doing that, Tikaros, you also said you were throwing a rope. To whom? Yep. So they... If I have a look, Adrastos and Ptolemaeus are separate from each other, just thrown. Yeah, they're all three all pretty separate. separate. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I would probably try and get three ropes out, no matter how long it takes. You can all throw one to each. Let's let's handle one set of actions. So yep. your first action, who do you throw the rope to? I'm throwing the rope to whoever is closest to the boat. That's all she would have time to think about, I think. Uh, I'm going to put Ptolemaeus closest to the boat based on the magic Excellent. D4 roll. So. I don't have a swim speed because the favorite event that I chose was Pancration. Okay. So. <laughs> you can fight. You're going to beat the water. I, I will punch these waves. <laughs> All right. So, um, Tikaros, let's start with a uh, dexterity check as you are throwing this rope, trying to hit Ptolemaeus with it, okay. basically. Oh, that's good. 18. All right. Ptolemaeus, a rope comes sailing over and into your hands. Vara, knowing that they're separated, where are you? Assuming there's a good 15 feet between them. Let's do it that way. Where are you placing this frozen block? I, you know, I've decided fuck that. Um, Vara is <laughs> Vara's in panic mode, and this is her family, so rather than stay on deck and just make little ice blocks, uh, she's going to dive into the water and wild shape into a reef shark. Okay. So I right. am now a eight-foot-long shark. All right. So, Ptolemaeus, the rope comes to you. Uh, you're, it's up to you if you grab it, because you were going under Adrastos. You said you were going to go after Ptolemaeus, so I'm going to assume you started that move before the rope actually hit him. Mm -hmm. So, Ptolemaeus, are you grabbing the rope? I, I, I wanted to roll for it, specifically. Okay. But, uh, I, uh... Do a dexterity, yeah, the, and I let's see if you the grab I the rope. I think the rope actually snaps me out of that, that little fervor that I had, and okay. I, will, I will grab onto it. I will... Okay. Yeah specifically try to so her dexterity is good enough to get it to you and i'm not going to say it's a challenge even for you in your condition to grab it i think you would panic and grab anything yeah. at that point adrastos and agrios uh i think the thing for you is uh you're swimming so let's have athletic yep. checks uh-huh can do why are my guys so bad today <laughs> yeah oh mine are not God. great either I have I can one loan, thing I can loan over you the a prison. ten. <laughs> one that's, thing higher than a ten today. That's a fourteen oh, wow. for me. That's a okay. ten. All right, Adrastos, you are trying to swim, but you are in full armor and your gear, so you are having difficulty uh, swimming and maintaining. So you actually dip under the water for a moment, and that's the point you realize you're not here to rescue anyone else. You're in trouble yourself. Agrios, on the other hand, you are able to maintain and swim. Uh, are you just treading water, heading toward the boat? What is your I'm, what is your intended? I'm path? gonna try and head back to the boat if I can. Well, I don't know. I if I get my mouth above water, part of me thinks that I should maybe <clears throat> try to make some peace if I can. It's not oh making peace. That's not in my character. Well, I would say however, you definitely you're, you're swimming, so grow. you're above water. So however, respecting water. the however respecting the gods 
is more in my character. So like, maybe I shouldn't have gone into Thassa's house and then talked shit. You know, fucked around and found out, as it <laughs> were. Um, so I think once his head is above water, he will go, <laughs> Thassa! I, as long as I am on the sea, and it, it seems like it pains him to say this. I will not, I will not pay homage to another god in your domain. So long as you grant me reprieve. I feel like I feel like Tam just wrote in like a massive penalty to my piety to Mogus. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say massive. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I can take that. I can take that. It's better than dying. Yeah, yeah. Comes in come, living comes in handy. All right. So Tikaros, uh, Ptolemaeus has hold of the rope. Yes. I see within thirty feet of me. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, can I say that? Well, then, Tolly, yeah. you would hear in your head, Krufix told me it's not time today. This is just a minor setback. You can do this. And we'll start pulling him in and say, Prime, help me. And Prime will come over and assist. You don't hear Mara. anything back. I don't reply. I'm Mara, not sure, you, baby. You are now, you are now <laughs> a shark, shark. baby. Cool. So I'm um, in my shark form. Um, I'm definitely still the same <laughs> <I'm> color. <sorry. laughs> well, I I just enjoyed that when Vara became a shark, she like came, became from New York. So he's like, I'm a shark, baby. I'm a shark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm swimming here. Um, so basically, um, it'll be like the same kind of skin color as as Vara, and then the fins will very obviously be kind of the same uh fins that she has kind of on her her arms and legs so it's it's distinguishably not a typical shark um i'm sure in your panic maybe you will panic about that but for everyone's knowledge there is a shark coming at you that does look like vara um i see a I shark with tentacle dreadlocks <laughs> yeah i uh i was swim speed of 40. Um, so I'm going to try to get as many people as possible. Whoever seems like they're drowning the fastest first. Uh, that would uh, definitely be Adrastos. Adrastos, yeah. So she would, she would go straight for Adrastos. Um, just full shark speed. I don't know what that looks like exactly, but she's going. I mean, she doesn't have any arms or anything, but... Um, I've got to go post of... my favorite sh my favorite shark meme to the uh, TTRPG memes now of the shark that oh, yeah. sees the person drowning and goes over and grabs them in its mouth. I need to help <laughs> I'm, them. I'm yeah. helping. I'm helping. Yeah. That person's <laughs> I've drowning. Seen, I've seen that one. <laughs> um, that's so funny. Yeah, so kind of that. But I mm -hmm. um, ideally, we can kind of set up a whole little swimming with the dolphin situation where I sidle up alongside Drastos and he can kind of grab onto dorsal fin or something like that. Adrastos, uh, aid has come your way. Are you going to accept the help? Yes, a, a, help so an eight-foot <laughs> yes. large shark has swam at you very fast. But <laughs> I've seen you do this before. Yeah. Because I've seen you in this form, and I know yeah. what an actual hunter shark looks like because I yeah. punched one in the face. So yes, I will. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Very good. Um, and Adrastos. then I'll kind of position myself to where I'm. I have to be in water as shark, but I'll I'll try to get you above water so you're not like having to hold your breath as I swim. Okay, Adrastos. Uh, most drowning people do tend to panic, but I think you are you're you're a warrior. You can handle stress, so I think you wouldn't be quite to that panic stage yet. So you're able to direct yourself and grab hold of of this fin and. Vara will bring you back up to the surface. And once you reach the surface, you see Ptolemaeus being pulled into the ship. Agrios, Agrios making promises to the gods while treading water, I assume. And uh, Vara will get you back to the uh, edge of the ship. 
So you two can definitely get back on board. Egrios, I assume as you're you're making these pronouncements, you are swimming your way back towards yep. the ship. Yep. Okay. I think yeah, Adrastus. Sorry, go ahead, Vara. I was going to say, Vara would drop Adrastus off. She wouldn't necessarily get out of the water with him, or especially if there's a way, if I see that Tikaros is being successful with pulling in Ptolemaeus, um, Vara will lead Adrastus to the rope, have him grab on, and then go pick up Agrius as well. But she wouldn't okay. leave the water or like assist anyone out of the water until she knows that no one is drowning. Okay. So, Agrios, I'm I'm curious how this is going to work for you as a centaur as this shark comes up to offer you aid how big is this shark it's a medium right yeah oh, uh, let me double check i know it's about eight feet yeah medium yeah. beast it's about eight feet long and y'all are giving me pack tactics right now so i can <laughs> if they have anything attack us i can i can shark it up <laughs> so she will assist you to getting back to the ship I think Adrastos and Ptolemaeus getting back on board the boat uh, is not going to be super difficult. It's a keel boat. It's only going to be a foot and a half to two foot above the water line for the the deck and the side end of the boat anyway, because they sit fairly low. Um, I, Agrius, though, I think there may be a little bit more trouble for him trying to climb on board. It's going to be kind of a bulky thing. Here's my question. Here's my question. Can I cast Misty Step to get up up there? Ooh. Of course. All right. I'm going to use my Misty Step to disappear in a puff of red smoke and appear up on the edge of the deck when I get right. close enough to the boat. So, Vara, all of a sudden, the, the weight that you have been drawing in just vanishes. Nice. And, 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 and as this, the puff of red smoke dissipates you just see this very sad this like this very miserable looking centaur his hair just draped all on his face he, he's just slumping his shoulders and looking down he he just looks like he's been shamed in some way or another and he goes off to sulk uh in some corner of the boat uh, As meanwhile, you... same wet long hair on the other side with Ptolemaeus just sitting there, but incredibly traumatized instead of being sulky. <laughs> just just out of it. Just kind of staring in the distance. Right. The Drastos uh, Prime will help pull you back up on to the deck and make sure that you're okay. And Drastos then... just shakes his mane and then... <laughs> <laughs> Vara, uh, what are you going to do? Vara is going to stay in the water a moment um, because it seemed like that being thrown overboard was linked to Agrios. Uh, there is a concern that Agrios being back on the ship would just start the cycle again. So she's staying in the water a moment <laughs> to make sure that doesn't happen. And also just since she has the opportunity to, doing kind of a threat check, circling the boat, seeing if there's any other predators, um, stuff like that. Give me a perception check, please. I shall. That is with my perception, not shark perception. I always get that confused. Great. It's another 20. Good day for Vara. 25. Wow, nice. Nice. Uh, as you look around, you you see no damage to the boat, no lasting damage. The the Excellent. punches of it uh, were meant to rock it, obviously not damage it. Uh, so all that sure. looks good. But That's you do sure. notice <laughs> you do notice several of the ships that were kind of in your vicinity, including the one that you had rowed past, um, or blown past, has now rowed into your area. But they specifically moved away from, and they're making hand gestures. Uh, and signs to Thassa, and you can hear them saying a few a few prayers to Thassa as they go by, and they refer to uh, your ship is cursed. Sure, yeah, that's fair. I I accept that. <laughs> has Has Thassa chilled, however, after uh, after Agrios's concession? When you when you land back on 
from your misty step. Amazingly, the place that you you appear is right where the blood stain was on the deck. Oh no! So the first thing that happens is the water that's from you kind of hits this stain, and while it's a stain and it cannot wash away specifically, the water and your foot uh, kind of makes a mark like you were you were attempting to clean it. It's it's how it's perceived. And as you go off into your corner to sulk, the sea stays calm. What time of day is it? How long have we been traveling? Uh, it was around nine when you left. You traveled a couple of hours, so um, uh, noon. Okay. Sure. Um. Uh, yeah. If there don't appear to be any major threats, just people talking about how we're cursed, which is totally fine. Um, Barra will go ahead and get back on the ship, and no longer be sharp. Time is going to go over and check on our owl friend, who again is just lied, laying flat on the deck, wings outspread. And he is going to move the wings and get them moving back and forth. And I'm going to see as he, he's kind of holding his beak open and looking down in his mouth. And that's, that's odd. Um, I'm not sure how to bring him out, but there's something stuck stuck in his mouth, and about that point, he's going to go mm, as Obu has attempted to bite him for having his finger in his beak, and he's going to get up, sit, and you know, kind of do his wings and everything, and get reoriented, and then fly back up to the top of the mast. Well, what did it look like? What did you see in there? It, like some red spherical object, something small. <gasps> oh, dear. Hmm. Not quite sure what it was, but it was stuck in there. And... Definitely something we should see, too. Did I ever answer the sending stone? Uh, I'm sorry, answered? Did someone send a message? I thought someone did, right? Wasn't there a glowing that it, happened at one point? It was given to, but there was no other messages sent. It was just in your possession at the time. Okay. I, th for some, I thought it was glowing at some point earlier. Uh, I, I described how it felt when you touched it. Oh, gotcha. That it was okay. cold to the touch, yeah. Right. Okay. So again, you are now sitting on idle sea with no wind. Bar is just letting that happen. Um, she kind of, you kind of see her climb back on top of the boat, and um, she like stalks over to the. Um, she stalks over to the, the helm and just kind of reassures that we're aligned well and if we list towards our direction that's great but if we're just kind of staying still where we're at she's going to let us take a moment okay. um and she'll kind of walk to the deck after kind of ensuring that we're in a safe position where we are and um all right everyone um how about we have a chat over lunch Sounds good. We also have a red sphere inside that hideous owl to deal with now. That's, that's great. We'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> and Var will just kind of, not checking if anyone follows her, she'll kind of stalk down below deck. Adrastus will follow. With an unhappy look on his face. <laughs> Should somebody stay on deck and watch, Vara? Vara? Should somebody stay up here and watch? She shakes her head. She's kind of done what she needs to do. Okay. I'll follow. 
I move Pierce hasn't moved well. yet. I haven't moved yet either. Come on, Tolly. Don't be sad. That was a chance to like face your fears, and you did, and you're amazing, and you shouldn't be sulking about it. You should be happy. You should be happier. I, I'm, I'm happy. I, I was, I mean, li- I'm alive. Why wouldn't I be happy? But I do need a moment. Thank you. Thank you for the rope. Oh, I'm going to come back and just sit with you unless you tell her to go away. She's going to just come and sit beside you just quietly. I think I'll, I'd let her. I'm going to just kind of chill for a bit. Okay. Wow, nobody cares about Agrius. Huh? If okay. if some time has passed, Adrasus <laughs> is going to come back and with none of his usual candor say, your captain has requested your presence. See yourselves there. Turn around and go back downstairs. He Whoa. is not in a good mood. <laughs> when Adrastos returns, she I, I think Vara makes the assumption that Adrastos is going to go hang out with them above deck. Um, rather than come down here. And so when Adrastus comes back down, she's like near like a food crate and she's just fucking pummeling it. <laughs> like she's like, she's staring at it and like very intensely, like almost with tears in her eyes, just just trying to smash the fuck out of this box. Um, Adrastus is going to kind of stand back and let her for a minute. And then he's just going to say from the stairs, Right leg forward a little bit more. There you go. Make sure that your these two fingers are aligned with your wrist, otherwise you're gonna break it. She listens. And she'll 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 kind of adjust her stance and give it a really solid punch. Well done. And he's going to walk over and kind of just put a hand on her shoulder, like allowing her to have her rage on the thing, but just a, a solidarity. It wasn't yeah. your fault. She'll kind of, she'll, after that solid punch that she has, she kind of, and you put her hand on her shoulder, she'll actually go ahead and turn and just like bury herself in your chest and just cry for a moment. And he's going to wrap his arms around her, just let her. Cool. Mm-hmm. After Adrastos <laughs> comes mm-hmm. back up and, and talks, I'll just stare a little bit again and then just kind of pick myself up a little bit just <sighs> Tigros, let's go get some food i'm sure hey uh, yeah you know surviving and everything uh gets you kind of hungry also the throwing up the throwing up also gets you hungry i should probably get some water too and there's but bef- right before then I'll just look over at Agrios how are you holding up I don't like saving <laughs> yeah well kettle calling the pot here It is what it is. We're in a different domain. We need to adapt and change and be better for our, ourselves for it. I betrayed my god and my destiny because I didn't want to drown or get any of you killed. I doubt that. I doubt that you betrayed your destiny in any way. In fact, it is as Tigro said. There are setbacks. In any good story, you're going to have to have drama. Mm. If everything is smooth sailing, ignore the pun, then, well, it's not as fun. Specifically for yours, because that'd be devoid of chaos. But I suppose you're right. Hmm. 
I'm sure there's some... There's some food ready, I'm waiting, calling your name down there as well. Let's all join our captain. Hmm? Captain Vara! Let's go. All right. You know, Agrios, if you died, that would be like, Mogus would hate you because you'd be weak. You saved yourself by living. You live another day to serve. So let's go oh. eat. Um, as uh, because Adrastos has just got good hearing. As he hears them coming, he's going to kind of tap Var on the back and go, stiff up for lip now. Don't let him see it. And he's just going to kind of take her away from his chest and just like wipe off her face and then turn in front of her to give her a second to collect herself. Oh my gosh. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Var, <laughs> Var composes herself. Agrios um, is still sulking as he comes down the stairs, though. All right. Um, first of all, food. And, and Var will kind of pass everyone. Um, she, like, goes over to the crate that she's, like, punched splinters into and just kind of, uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, tries to, like, be, like, nonchalant about, like, grabbing some food out of it. Just, like, basic, like, fruit reds. Um, can I make like a quick stuff? Yes. Can I make a quick insight check to see if that was definitely broken by or like perception, like by you in that sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do I? How do I oppose that deception? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I rolled. I would like to assist your deception check by rubbing my knuckles. To Just make it look like I did it. Okay. <laughs> that, what does that give me advantage? <laughs> yeah. That would be advantage, yes. <laughs> Ooh. That's a worse roll. I got a 14. Well, I tried. <laughs> 21 total. But cool. As I as I see it, I'll just be like, man, those waves were a lot worse than I thought. It's kind of ruined everything here, too. Should probably clean up a little bit later. Thanks, Dolly. Far kind of like, like she's like passing out food and very obviously is like fucked up her knuckles. <laughs> um, so she's kind of like, yeah, yes, um, we'll we'll clean up from the waves. <laughs> and she just um, kind of does that like awkward like, <laughs> um, and then once everybody has some like food to munch on, she'll just send. Um, I made a promise to keep you all safe, and we are not even a day into our journey, and I have not been upholding that promise very well. We are um, safe, though. Yeah. All of us. We're safe. Was it anything you did, Farah? I suppose. Um, he does put emphasis on the word you. I just, um... We just need to be really careful and tactful about our actions. And <sighs> I... We have a lot of things working against us, but we do have things working for us. Um... I think it's appropriate for all of us to call upon our gods and look to them. Uh, but yes, angering Thassa or anyone else is something we really want to avoid. She has a temper. Um, so uh, from now on, I think let's be quiet in our you know, our praises and our worship and what, what we need to do and uh, be mindful that this is this is Thassa's boat and <laughs> there are other people on the waters now referring to us as a cursed boat um, which isn't a good look uh, not that I necessarily care what other people think but um, if if you on the waters believe that another boat is cursed, you will not help that boat. 
Um, so we should be putting on the best appearances as possible. And um, I may be a bit more strict going forward on what we're doing and when and, and when to take turns. I, I don't want I don't want anything like that to happen again. I am. Um, I have big shoes to fill. Uh, my father is the best captain I've ever known. And I know that sounds biased. He's my dad, but uh, he was the best captain ever. And I'll stand by that. So uh, I'm a bit nervous. It's been a while since I've been on the water, but um, I, I reavow my promise and no one is going to end up in the water again. And if they do, I will, I will save you. A million times over, I will save you all, even if that is not necessarily the wishes of my father. But from now on, if anything like that even begins to happen, I need I, I, all, all of you get under deck and I, I'll handle it. I can do it on my own. We're not your passengers, Farah. We're not just some crew either. Yeah, we're you're your friends. Fine. You're your we're your family. Exactly. So I, I, I'm not but going that to also, let you. But that also means whatever burden any of us have or cause, we do it together. We handle it together. Tolomaeus, how's your swimming? Terrible. Then why would you be on deck? Listen to me, Tolomaeus. For once in your life, stop talking and listen. If you are thrown from the deck of this ship, you will drown and there is little we can do to help you. I would not trust myself in a Senate. I would bow to your voice. We are on the ocean. We are in Vara's battlefield. If she believes your I safety is better not... below deck. No, stop, stop. I don't know what's going on with you right now, but this is not a moment to argue amongst each other. I want to make sure that nobody takes extra burden on any of our lives more than we can to help ourselves. We're not helpless. I'm not helpless. Neither are you. Just because we're not in a situation that we are not familiar with, we are not 100% helpless. I would not want Vara or anybody to have to do everything themselves. Nor will she have to. Exactly. But Ptolemaeus, so please, I will pull let my us no. do it. No, 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 no. We will all pull our weight however we can. I may not pull as much weight as you, but I will do so nonetheless. I don't doubt your strength or your will, Ptolemaeus, nor do I doubt your willingness to help us. Then I want to with me. Uh, at this point, Adrasus is like gripping the table to the point that it's going to crack under his fingers. And he's just going to shake his head, stand up, and walk out of the room. If in the moment I ask someone to go below deck, we will. Please listen. I won't ask it unless I mean it. I appreciate you talking. I'll, I'll talk to addresses. But are, uh, now that the captain said, is everyone okay? Are you okay? I'm fine. That's not... Um, we didn't go, we didn't sit foot on a ship to not be wet. This will dry off. Okay. Well, if you need anything, tell me. I'm wearing a lot of hats right now. I'm, I'm a captain, I'm, I'm a family member, and you know, I'm obeying the sea, but I'm 
um, there are going to be moments where I get lost in my own stress and emotion and trying to live up to my father. And um, if you're not okay, I'll try, to, I'll try to pay attention to that, but don't be afraid to let me know. I do think you hold tremendous weight. I think all you do in a, in a very short time, you've learned a lot that many people take months to learn on the ship. And you've all been thrust into it and learned it in a very short period of time. And, and I think it's very valuable. And, but, you know, I, uh, you need to make sure that you're taking care of yourself as well. So, uh, I really do firmly believe that strength is, is not entirely focused on your muscle or your stamina. It, it's, a, it's about heart as well. So if your heart isn't okay, then you're not fit to run the ship. So if any of you need breaks at any time or are stressed, or, or if anything is, is traumatizing, I know we all have are coming from dark places. Um, take a break. Or let me know. Will do, Captain. Zach Reeves, are you okay? Fine. It's not your fault. I know you're thinking that. Okay. I, I love you all. Okay. Could we maybe get going again? I love forward movement. And I think it would help us to just be busy and going in a forward direction. I agree. Um, Ptolemaeus, and she'll go ahead and hand Ptolemaeus her uh, telescope. At the helm, uh, Tikaros rudder and Agrios row. And um, I'll see where Justice fits and all of that in a moment. Yes, Captain. Is that okay? Okay. Vara will find wherever Adrastos stopped off to. Adrastos is on the deck, coiling ropes to make sure that they're clean and out of the way. He sees you coming. He looks up, sees you, and just goes back to what he's doing. Captain. Address those. I know what they must think of me. I know what Ptolemaeus must think of me. But if he thinks that I don't think he has the stomach for this, he's wrong. He's stronger You're than he gives himself credit for. You're scared for them. They're children, Vara. They're children. They're cubs batting at a viper, not expecting it to bite. And I've watched them. I've watched them think their actions don't have consequences, but every action has a consequence, and I will not lose another family. And he puts his arm through the side of the ship and just... Oh. Okay. They're children, and they don't think it's going to bite them. But today, I watched one of them throw another into the ocean. Uh, sure. We can look at it that way. But um, It wasn't her fault. It wasn't anyone's fault. But actions have consequences. And we can't brush that under the rug like dust. I know, Justin. I'm, I'm doing my best. Um, You're doing fine. But I think to... I... It doesn't take being a child to, to make mistakes. I think... 
Well, I know all of us have dealt with a lot in the past as well, but the amount of destruction and grief and horror that we've witnessed in, in since we've met each other, just random people at a festival. We've now watched the destruction of, of multiple major buildings, lives lost, people crushed in front of us. I mean, um, I, I'm, I'm all for learning lessons and, and bettering ourselves, but I, I think we need to give ourselves a break, you especially. I, I know we haven't talked about it, but if you wear it on your sleeve that you've faced loss, serious loss, and I know you don't want that to happen to these people, and I don't want it either, and that's kind of weird and almost against what I believe in. I, I believe when it's someone's time to go, they should go. I mean, theoretically, if, if someone's tossed to the sea, they're tossed to the sea. I, I've never jumped in and saved a crewmate. I've thrown a line, but um, to intervene in the way that I have today was is very foreign to me. And um, They've all faced loss, Captain. I'm not special. No, you are. Of course you are. People, people don't, people as, as enigmatic and strong and brave and passionate as you, I, that, that comes from something very dear. And I'm sure it's really scary to be feeling that love for people again, because that means you fear that fear of loss again. Um, but I, uh, I think you need to let me be the one who's protecting people right now. I fucked that up multiple times at this point, to be honest. I kind of kept Agarius alive, but I, I've been hard on myself too, and, and maybe I need to take a step back. I keep comparing myself to my father, but my father is one of the most easygoing people I've ever met. Um, so maybe I should take a page from, from his captain's log, and we need, to, we need to give ourselves space, you especially. Um, so no one at, is, yes. At this point, Adrastos, doesn't stand all the way up because you can tell that he just doesn't have the strength but you've seen his shoulders kind of heaving a little bit he's just going to turn around and is fully crying and he's just gonna like grab Vara's waist oh oh table's like, turned okay <laughs> he's, he has gone like he has regressed I'm not used to feeling fear Vara I'm not I know. I'm not afraid of anything but when Tully sank and I couldn't get to him, I was scared. Vara's gonna start. She kind of, she doesn't want to make light of the situation necessarily, but she's this is very new to her. I mean, it's very like weird for her to be like. <laughs> once again, she she sees you as very much similar to her dad, so it's like, oh, I've never seen <laughs> someone like this show show this cut before. So she kind of starts braiding your mane a little bit in her hands, um, this little like lock, like pirate lock, and. And she just kind of smiles as you as you're as you're crying into her and um, braiding your mane and just uh, well, that's why you have someone who can turn into a shark as part of your pack, your pride. You are a terrifying monster. And he stands up to his full height and wipes his eyes off. Suppose I should get down to the oars. No, I don't think so. Have you used my telescope yet? I think that I have. Well, come with me. 
and I will take his paw in my hand and lead him over um, to the helm where Tali is, theoretically, if you listen to me. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, no, for sure. Um, and After she'll kind Fruita of, been there. Yeah, she'll kind of, you know, smile and nod to him and, and reach her hand out without necessarily saying anything, trying to kind of like silently yeah. convey like, I'll take it from here if you want to go down to the deck and, and busy yourself with something else. Uh, I'll pass the uh, I'll pass the telescope over and uh, kind of give like a warm smile to Adrastos and just be like, "Oh, I'll, I'll go below deck, kind of clean up the mess and everything." Thank and you, Ptolemaeus. If anybody, before you go, he puts his hand on his chest. I have dishonored you, my brother. Please accept my apologies. Apology accepted. And right before I leave, like, I'll be, like, leaving and kind of in the background. You need to take a break, too, sometime, my friend. Brother. Brother. I've already told him. (laughs) (laughs) Var will just kind of smile and nod. (laughs) Yeah. And she will hand um, the telescope to Adrastos. And she'll just kind of, she'll kind of lean against um, anything that is nearby to lean against and, and smile at him. Um, I acted my... too hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the amount of times I've cried during TAM <laughs> games. Welcome to the club. Um, uh She'll kind of smile at you and hand you the telescope and, um, you know, motion for you to hold it up and, and look through it just around and everything. And, um, my father was a man named Menelaus, captain of the Providence. There's a little hint of a smile when he hears you say the name, because yeah. this is the first time that he's heard that. And he remembers the last time that he heard that name. He is Captain of the Providence. Um, I haven't seen him in a few years. I, I, knowing him, he might not even be alive anymore, which <laughs> is fine. He's he's had a good run. I, I hope he's doing well. But he uh, he sent me out as early as around fourteen um, to go and captain other ships. And I've been captaining ever since. And he pulled me from the waters when I was just a baby. That's why my full name is Tideborn. I was born of the tides. Don't know where I came from. Uh, he just always called me a gift. And um, I was raised by him and by his crew. Xenon was there. It's funny running into him and helping him after he bottle fed me at some points. <laughs> um, but he's uh, he's one of the strongest people I know. Very kind, very easygoing, very very powerful. Someone I think anyone should look up to. And he has been a captain since diapers as well. I'm just following in the family line. And, um, well, he made me this telescope. And as I got older, I went ahead and put the mark of Atreus on it because, um, I felt that was the proper god to follow. As I got older, I, um, well, because I was just found of the sea in a storm, which no baby, not even a triton like myself should should have been able to survive uh, i like to think that perhaps i'm the ninth exception which isn't something i go touting or or you know i'm kind of shaky on even sometimes this day i feel confident in it but um as the ninth exception i feel well there are eight other exceptions that have been made by athreos to people who were supposed to pass and um, we're given a second chance. They had some 
unfinished business. We're likely warriors or, or you know, oracles of their own on some divine quest that Athreus saw was a fitting to be finished. But the agreement was that when they finished their task, they would return, and none of them have. And um, my goal and divine destiny is to find all of those people and return them. Well, Captain. I know two things to be absolutely true. If Captain Menelaus could see you now, he would be more pleased than all the captains on all the oceans in all the world. And if the gods do choose to make exceptions or give us gifts, there is no greater gift that Athreos could have given to our crew than Captain Vara Tidewolf. Hmm. She'll kind of smile and I have I have no doubt that my father is proud of me because I feel his presence through you every day. I hope you know that. I'm sure you already do. I kind of vaguely remember hitting my head in or fog or something and saying that to you once, but um I don't know. I didn't I didn't know if that was weird. I haven't really had many friends other than people on the crew that either knew him or knew me since I was a baby, so I didn't know if it was weird to tell someone that they remind you of your dad, but, um... <laughs> no, I take it as the highest honor. If I know <laughs> the esteem you hold him in. Cool. That's good. Well, um, anyways, long exposition. I, um... I don't know. I, I feel called to do this, and I'm glad that I get to have a presence like you um on that journey and um i've met someone uh people who also served athreus that mint coins out of masks of the nameless i didn't mention that when we came across one but that's really not something that we smile upon typically <laughs> but um that uh that minotaur was just very kind so it was hard for me to say anything but um I was thinking that I mint a new telescope, um, and I'd like you to have this one once I have a new one that I've forged in myself. You've given me um, a mark of your tribe, your pack, um, and so I, I feel it's fitting for me to pay that back. and. and give you a mark of mine. He... The boy was too stunned to speak. He doesn't <laughs> has Athreus, say anything. He and she nods. kind of, like she, like, she sees that you're not speaking and she thinks that you're, like, offended or something because it has Athreus' symbol on it, so she kind of starts to, like, sputter. And um, I understand it has Athreus' symbol on it, and that might not exactly be your kind of... Um... He's going to reach over and take her arm and then put it in, like... <laughs> the warrior's grasp of, like, the two wrists. It is the finest honor I could be bestowed, Captain. Okay. And then he's going to pull her into a big hug and then let her go. Cool. <laughs> She'll be like, all right, well, we've seen each other cry quite a bit in hugs and talking. I'm... Have fun telescoping, and she's just gonna, like... <laughs> She's just gonna waltz off somewhere and like <laughs> try to calm down because she's been in like a pretty heightened emotional state for the past few hours. So um, she's gonna give you some space now and just kind of go, ah, Tinkerus the Runner, ha, huh? how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> it was intentional. It was a tension release. Comedic. Yes. That was that was totally on purpose. I'm a professional and <laughs> completely uh intentionally do everything. Yes. Um anyway. Right. <clears throat> Tikaros. Um you'd said something about going to the rudder, but I don't know if you ever actually came above deck to do that, so or, or are you eavesdropping yeah. on the other conversation because you're Tikaros? So. 
No, she probably would have, she would have eaten some food, same as Tolly, and then wandered up because Vara had been very kind of bossy and she's like I better be nice and do like try and concentrate go to the rudder so she would have gone up to the <laughs> rudder she probably would have seen Vara and Adrastos talking she would have noticed Adrastos's braids and gone battle braids <laughs> they look great and then she would have gone to the rudder <laughs> as you approach the back of the ship and you get around there's several uh small structures on the deck that are just meant to contain people gear and waves should they crash over the bow uh, but as you get around those and get to the back you notice at the very back of the ship facing out towards the back is prime standing with a hand on basically each side of the boat hi prime you know we've we just got stuck in some kind of weird drama down there but i'm still remembering there's a really weird red sphere we got to get out of that owl and how are you doing he doesn't answer prime he'll turn around she gets right up in his face he'll turn around and look at you and one of the first things you notice is normally his eyes have a light blue glow to them mm -hmm. and they're dark Oh no. Prime? Prime. And he is just going to turn and walk away from you. <gasps> hey, Agrios, Agrios, can you come and do that? Look for magic thing? Agrios, I'm calling out pretty loudly. Agrios, I need your help. Nobody needs my help. Yes, I do. Get your butt up here. You're, Stop you're being still below sorry deck, yourself. Right? Get your butt up here. He is. He's, he's below deck like Achilles soaking in his tent. All right. And uh, Prime is just going to keep walking, and he is actually going to walk past Ptolemaeus and Adrastos and Vara and go below deck. Oh, no. I stop by all of them and I say, something's wrong with Prime. His eyes are all gone dark and he just walked downstairs and he always talks to me and he's not talking to me. Something's wrong with him. He might be in like a low power mode. Is he, is that a thing? <laughs> and Farah will kind of chase after him with you. Yeah. He's going to, he is going to walk over and sit down next to Agrios. And just kind of sit where he's looking straight in your face so if you're looking down that's fine he is staring straight he would be looking you in the eyes if you look up agrios is looking down but eventually he does what something's wrong with him and noticing that you have entered the area downstairs he's just going to shake his head and nothing and he'll stand up and walk back up onto the deck oh. same i'm gonna follow him i agree I'll come on it's a mystery let's go see what's wrong with prime uh, yeah. come on you can't stay down here forever oh can't i no Maybe when we reach land. It's going to get boring down here. It's already boring. Let's go. Mm. Fine. Yeah. And she I will won't. bounce up the steps, looking back at you expectantly. I agree as follows along. But I'm not, not, there's no kind of bounce in anything that could be described as a bounce in the way that he moves. <laughs> I'm just going to walk up to Vara. Captain, should we use the rudders to move? Um, are you okay, Prime? 
I'm fine. Do you have some form of low power mode? Is that a thing? I'm not sure what you mean. Are you operating at a lower capacity? Are you tired or are you just tired in an ample rot sort of way? I'm fully able to serve, Captain. What is it you wish that I do? Sure, but you're not acting the way you typically do. Am I acting in a manner that is inappropriate? No. Have I, I just care you? about you? No. What can I do to get us moving? What would you prefer, Captain? Are you able to identify why you may be behaving in a different manner than what you have behaved for the past time that we've known you? He's going to look around. Who is around us at the moment? I would probably be following after talking to Agrios. Agrios would be very slowly plodding along behind her. Where are I'm they? Be below on deck. The... Uh, okay, sorry. No, sorry. I, I'm going to be below deck. Okay. Where are they on the boat? I'll leave that to Vara. Uh, you, you had been at the helm, we so below... I don't know where you went. Well, he went below deck, didn't he, or did he come back up? He went below deck, and then he came back up when Tikaros followed him. <clears throat> mm, well, because I was kind of following as well. So I, I guess we could, I feel like maybe we'd be on the threshold of us. We're, we're near, we're at the steps to below deck. We're still, I'd say we're probably still below deck, um, but about to be at top. So kind of in that threshold area. So not me. I'm still up top using the telescope. He will look around and seeing Tikaros, he would say, I would prefer to have this conversation privately. Okay. Lead the way. And I'll, I'll let him be the one who picks where we talk for his comfort. Okay. Just wherever nobody else is. <laughs> cool. If that's below yeah, just, deck, we'll just go probably, below deck. Yeah, probably just stay below deck and kind of find our way in a corner or something. Captain, I am disappointed with my actions, and I find that I am most likely not suited to be on this mission directly. I would like to do what is necessary to get us where we're going, and when we complete the river and pass through Miletus, I will leave the ship and return home. We, we love having you here, Prime. You helped save one of our shipmates. I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, you noticed that the, the ship wasn't going at its, at its full speed and capacity and allowed us to help, you know, fix our speed and begin rowing. I, I think you've been invaluable on this trip. I don't know why you would think that about yourself. I, I am an excellent servant. And that is where I need to remain. I have tried to do more and went beyond what Elitus has said was appropriate. He, he, he has suggested that I, I am a servant and I belong with my, my head in books. And that is where I serve the best purpose. Is I, that what you did? I froze. And it wasn't until someone else took action that I was able to do anything to assist. And it's not the first time. I am not a machine of action. Prime, I don't I don't think any of us are. It's not about machinery or servant or anything. I there were about a million things in hindsight that I can think of that I could have done better as a captain to ensure that people didn't end up in the water and I had let it happen. That has nothing to do with you or 
being a servant, you, what your proper place is, that's just, that's just error or, or, or hindsight. I mean, we all make mistakes. That's not, if you're happy here among us as a crew, then you should stay here. But if you would be happier or feel better suited returning home, I won't disagree with that. But I, we are acting as as an extension of Elitus and, and investigating these things. And therefore you are serving whether you are back at home or with us. So even if you're doubtful of your actions or, or mistakes or anything like that, um, I still think you should go wherever you're happiest because I'm not happy with how things went today and, and um, emotions were pretty raw for me and, and raw for others. And, um, today was a tough day, but there is nowhere I'd rather be than surrounded by these people on this ship right now. And if that's what you want to do, then you should do that. I'll just stand there and stare at you for a moment. I... There are things that I would like to do, things that I have desired and wished to do, but I see my limitations, and I'm not sure that I can get beyond them. I... I cannot jump into the water to save someone. I will sink. I do not need to breathe. So I can walk back to the shore with no trouble. But I cannot save anyone. Well, I you... am not a fighter. I have never raised a weapon in anger. I serve meals, I research, I analyze facts, but I failed you in that as well. I did not see through and I did not even detect the name that was given to us by the ranger. I should have recognized it immediately. Why, why are you judging yourself so harshly in comparison to us? There's no reason for that. I, you are one of two people who pulled Ptolemais back up onto the ship. Just because I can jump in the water, I, it's I not assisted. a comparison point. I serve. As the commander had stated, I am a servant. Well, all I of you are on my ship under, under my captainhood. You treat me differently than anyone in Melitus. This is my first outing away from my owner. And it's probably I... really hard and stressful and, and terrifying. And I mean, my first time being captain on my own was a disaster. I I ran us into a lighthouse. Okay, one of one of the main things this this massive bearing of light, this this fire that is forever burning, signaling where port is, where you should go. I ran into that. I didn't even know that you could do that, and that was my first time. And then my second time, I didn't run into that lighthouse. I am not going to tell you what you can or can't do. But I am, as captain of the ship, going to tell you that whether you are acting first or assisting second, that you are a valued member of this crew, no matter what your origins or your experience. And I'm going to let you take that and do with it what you will. Captain. Tikaros made a statement to me earlier that 
I think she expects more than from me than I am capable of providing. I am just a machine. What did she say, if you don't mind me asking? She expressed love for me. Okay. And I am scared well, that I will let her down. I don't think so. I really don't. I think we all have different ways of showing our love to each other. And I'm not a machine. I don't know what that's like. And I know I've heard, I've read of and Borat and, and that type, and I don't know what your capacity is for different emotions or thoughts or anything, but um, sometimes love is not quite matched in the same way or, or unrequited or otherwise. Um, sometimes love is for an inanimate object, not to necessarily compare you to that, but Tikaros may not have meant it in the way that you're receiving it. It might have just been a love akin to my love for the sea. I don't expect the sea to love me back. I just love it. If, if that's your reason for wanting to return, like I said, I'm, I'm not one to try to sway you in any given direction. You, your choices are your own. But if that's what you're basing your decision on, I think it's a bad choice. I understand. Thank you for your insight. Talk to Tikaros. Tell them this. Have that conversation. And I think you'll be reassured. May I return to service now? Of course. And he will turn and walk up onto deck. And go back to the rudders. Does cool. he still look depressed? Uh, there is no light in his eyes at the moment. Agrius wants to go talk to Prime. Oh. I don't know who else is around, but he'll be back at the rudders and he will unhook a rudder to start. Oh, are there other, if there are other people around, he won't do it. I don't know. That's why I'm, I'm leaving that up to the other people for where they're at. Bar would probably stay below deck and, and take a turn at rowing. Or what's our um, wind right now? Are, are we, do we have a good amount of wind in our sails or are we still? There is no work? wind. You, you have been sitting right. idle ever yeah. since. Yes. Cool. The, yeah, the, so the, cool. the wonderful wind that you had has been taken away. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Var will go ahead and take her turn on rowing. Trust address just to kind of be up top for a while. Yeah, I think Tikaros would see Prime come back up and just think he's avoiding her and probably go with Vara and just have a turn on the rowing and just take out all that kind of anger and annoyance on the rowing on the on the oars for a bit. So Agrios, I guess it's us at the back of the ship. Uh huh. Agrios goes sits down next to Prime. So, feeling a bit down, are we? Down. Um, I am disappointed in myself and my actions and feel inferior to the things that are expected of me, including things I expect of myself. I suppose I can relate to that. You and I, we never talk, but uh, perhaps we can see eye to eye here. Though, I don't think anyone really knows why I'm feeling like this. And I wondered if maybe you could keep a secret. I am, I've never had a secret. I would be happy to keep one for you. But I must warn you, Tikaros has stated previously that she will make every attempt to get every secret that is made known. Don't secret. I know it. 
Well, see to it that you keep this one, and we'll see how happy you are about it once you hear it. You see, I am not. Well, I am disappointed in my actions, I suppose. But there is something worse. When the gods were angered, and the ship was nearly capsized, my first thought, as it always is, was, can I placate this wrath with blood? I looked around and I realized it's only the seven of us. And do you know something, Prime? I thought about it. I thought which one of them has to die so that the rest of us may live. That would be the third time. And he's just going to sit there staring at you. The third family. If you can call them that. The first time with my herd, it was my mother. Then with the Minotaurs, it was Prodos. Who knows who it would have been this time. It's not like I could have run on a boat. So looking at me, do you really feel so inadequate, Brian? Because I am realizing I am not fit to be part of a tribe, a family. Well, my first thought is Ptolemaeus. He serves the weakest link on the ship and therefore would be the least loss of value. However, I would be very disappointed if you did sacrifice him, but he would make the most sense. I arrived at the same conclusion mm. before deciding against it. I think that you would have found yourself unwelcome and, uh, Maybe not allowed on the ship, should that have happened. Yes. That has been my experience. Yeah. Thank you, Prime. Oh, very well. It was good to get it off of my chest. Um, exactly which part of that do you consider the secret? All of it, if you can help it. Well, I think it's well known that you're a murderous creature. Ah. Uh, that's fair. But just don't tell anyone I've thought about murdering them. It They take it personally. I, I understand that. Can I ask you a question, Agrius? Certainly. Has anyone ever loved you? When I was young, probably. And yes, yes, I think some have loved me. It's never worked out for them. Have you ever loved anyone? It's never worked out for me either. Thank you, Brian. That is my concern as well. I don't think that would work out for me, but I'm disappointed by the fact that it wouldn't. I guess that's my secret. I want to feel things. I want to. Perhaps if you were meant to feel those things, you would have been built to. I think whatever purpose is meant for you, you are exactly suited to it. Could you do me a favor, Agrius? That depends. What is it? 
I would like you to teach me to kill things. With pleasure. It is the only endeavor in which I have found a modicum of success. I suppose we need to find something killable outside of the crew. I think that would be a bad choice to start with. Well, supposedly we are surrounded by fish. Cue the kraken. No, well, thank you. I, I look forward to learning. I would prefer not to let the crew know as well. But... Perhaps at night, get some spears. And we'll see what we catch. Very good. And he reaches over that... and pats Prime on the back. <laughs> With that, the light kind of just glows back into his eyes a bit. But it's not the same tint of blue. It's got a little bit, it's more purplish. It's got a little bit more red in it than it did before. That can't having, be anything bad. Having successfully corrupted another soul, Agrius gets up and walks away. <laughs> And Prime will go back to uh, manning the rudders and using them to uh, propel the ship forward. Anyone else on the crew going to do anything? <laughs> this has been a... <laughs> yeah, seriously. Crazy trauma dump <laughs> stuff right here. Uh, I'm just gonna... Uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I got to Tully just wants to stay below deck cleaning stuff and, and under the guise of cleaning stuff, make sure that he's alone just for a bit. Okay. Yeah. That's it. All right. Yeah. Var is continuing to kind of do a rowing shift. Yeah. All right. Same. Well, with that, we will just continue to propel the ship and propel the ship on. If no one has anything particular that they want to do, we will just go ahead and forward past the rest of this journey to the mouth of the river, which at our one mile per hour is going to take many hours to get there. So we're going to arrive at the mouth of the river about 10 o'clock at night, it looks like. So it is approaching evening time. Uh, you have reached the mouth of the Melitus River, which is going to cut you across this uh, peninsula and into Melitus Bay. Are you planning to travel through the night? Stop. What would you like to do? Captain? I, yeah, I think after the day we've had, we should rest. It's been a very physically and emotionally demanding day. So far, I would kind of say we should get closer to a shore and away anchor. Okay. How close do you wish to get to shore? Um, we just lost a camera. <laughs> oh. uh, no. Was it me? It's okay. No, it's it was okay. me. No, no, it was I, me. No, it just cut. <laughs> Now I am Agrios. Ah, murder, <laughs> bogus. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? I don't appreciate that impression. I really don't. I'm, I'm sorry. So... No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, <didn't bug> <laughs> I apologize. It just popped uh, away. That's all right. I'm just waiting to make sure Quick, I get everybody back this. in the right place. <laughs> okay, I got everybody back in the back. Picaros was DM for a moment there, so she could have fixed that whole crime oh, thing. So. Oh, no, Sunclaw. That's what it was. Sunclaw. Very good. Very good. Well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> anyway um, I think in terms of where we should anchor that'll be um, obviously within distance at which the anchor will land um, so at least that close um, um, well, you, you were about 500 meters away from shore before you're coming to a mouth in the river I mean 
feet, meters, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. Sure. Probably like 50 meters. Is that reasonable? I don't, I'm very sure. bad at judging. Yeah, 30 feet out. That's, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think within enough distance where for some reason, if chaos happened, we could get, we could swim to land. That would, that would be a good, a good distance okay. for me. All right. Cool. Very good. So you set up way anchor and uh, I guess you're going to just sleep through the night or try to. Yeah. All right. I think we'd still do, I, I would recommend, even though we're on a ship um, and there's like a false sense of security in that, uh, that we would still do uh, watches. Okay. Heck yeah. How many so watches? Have, have one or two people up top deck and then everyone sleep below deck. We have like hammocks set up below deck, right? Is that the sleeping situation? Yes. Yep. Perfect. Uh, there are actually four hammocks down below. Uh, I did that because I presumed Agrius was not going to try and get into a hammock, but... Very smart. <laughs> but who knows? That's what entirely up to you guys. Uh, I'll take watch. I'll take a watch. Okay. I don't know if anybody's going to join me, but I'll, I will do so. I'll join you. Well, got me by the mute. I'll take this out. Oh, did you want to do, well, y'all, I mean, y'all have unresolved tension. Do you want to do that? Absolutely do that if you want to. I... Unresolved tension of what kind? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> okay. Um, there will no, be I'll let, I'll no let shenanigans on it. my ship. <laughs> I'll let you do it. Okay. I'm doing the rounds of people I've offended, and I've already apologized to Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> Sweet. I'll take watching. All right. Uh, so I'm going to uh, the Z the image offered, I have also offered to take watch. Just for <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. No awesome. Z. <laughs> what other uh, trauma dump can we have with? <laughs> yeah, Z. Tell us about your personal traumas, just as a person. <laughs> go, oh, go ahead and lay God. it out. <laughs> My my trauma talk is great because I didn't have it with any of you. Very fair. No, that was a good, that was a solid move. Party still has no idea. <laughs> Although you're trusting Prime to be able to keep a secret. Yeah, for how long? <laughs> <laughs> you don't look at the guy that actually just keeps secrets for a thing, you know? No, that, that. <laughs> you mean the, the one that I was confiding that I could, had considered killing? Like I said in chat, uh, I'm pretty sure I'd be, I'm at the point where I'd be very offended if you didn't consider killing me. Yeah. And it was so. very funny, you were like, oh, they'll judge me so harshly for wanting to kill them. And like, Var's whole thing is like, if it's someone's time to die, it's someone's time to die, okay? Like, <laughs> <laughs> she would you, understand. <laughs> you actively told a champion to kill me. I, I'm not offended by that. <laughs> That's fair. Okay, oh, you know what? Oh. That's true. That's <laughs> Should have just been open about it. Uh, who has the better perception? I have plus five. You have the better perception. Sick. It will help. First roll was a 10. That's not great. Second roll was a 18. That's better. All right. As you watch around the ship, it is quiet. The water is, is fairly calm. Um, your anchor drifts a little bit and kind of moves you into the mouth of the river before it finds purchase on some rocks underneath, but you are held fast at that point. And it is just a quiet evening. There is no other traffic going in and out of the mouth of the river. So any other ships that have gone by have done their travel for the night. Apparently there's not any other evening travel going on. So it's a nice uh, starry, starry evening. Oh, nice. Nice. Not noticing any other boats, I'll just casually be like, I guess we are cursed, huh? Just a cursed vessel. Nobody um, around. You'd be surprised how many nights are quiet on the sea. It's not like a city. You can always expect someone to be bustling around no matter the hour, but I mean, especially with everything that's been going on recently, I, I wouldn't want to be traveling at night either, which is why we're not. That is fair. That's fair enough. I don't think we're cursed. I think we've just 
Well, I was saying the same to address to some. We've been through a lot, and I don't think we take the time to process that as much as we should. It's I mean, fine, as people right? as well, but I mean, just as a group, in, in, in such a short amount of time, we witnessed a lot of terrible things. So I think we should all just be a little bit more patient with ourselves. Patience aside, though, how is he doing? Adrastus? Hmm. I think he's all right. Um, I think I was a little harsh. Oh, I think I he was a little harsh, too, to be fair. I think we have the same idea of each other. Of all of us, at least. But we approach it differently. Well, one of the... One of the most frightening things you can do is care about someone. And uh, I think he's experienced that fear firsthand mm -hmm. and now he's gone and put himself in a position where he cares about people again. And I don't know, we haven't talked at length, not yet at least. I hope maybe we do, but Speaking he doesn't want to caring, lose you. I don't think I want to lose any of you either, but. Speaking of caring about yourself, or caring for others at least, I have a question. I Completely have an answer. <laughs> Would you rather, in your passing, be remembered for your actions and solely for your actions, or remembered as the person that you are and possibly be mourned? For that. Well, I think the person that you are is made up of your actions. But I guess I'm thinking about it the wrong way, but I'm more thinking about if it's just your actions, just your accolades. No feeling, no emotions. People remember you and honor you by those actions over remembering the person, remembering the memories that they share with you and feeling the sorrow and mourn the person as you are. That's a really tough one for me. I am, um, I would feel like I'm doing a disservice to my divine quest by saying anything other than actions, but, um, I don't know, I was talking with Adrestos about my father earlier, and I think about how I think of him and remember him, and, you know, I, I like to think I think of both. I think of his actions as a captain, and, but I do, I, I mean, bias, it's my, my dad, but, I think about how how good his character was, far more than his actions. And I don't know. I guess I guess the heart says that I want to be known for the heart, but the brain says I want to be known for the brain. So I don't. Unfortunately, I don't know if I have a decisive answer for you. All I know is that you can't. Within, I mean, within reason a little bit, but for the most part, you don't decide when you die. Um, and so to be, to be worried about how people will remember me or, or try to take a certain course of, of action or, or way of holding myself in an attempt to affect people's perceptions and how they'll think of me after I die. I think it's more important to just focus on how you're living and try to do a little bit of both. Try to be a good person and try to have to do good actions. Like I said, I think your actions make up the person. And I think I, I think I like to focus far more on that than the death portion of it. I, a lot of people fear death. Um, for a very long time, I've been at peace with the concepts 
through through my God and my worships. And um, I don't really think about things like that. I just think about life. That's but fair. I'd understand today was probably a bit um, a bit stressful for you. Would quell up thoughts of death and things like that. Do you do you have an answer yourself? It's interesting because I've always felt that there should be a disconnect. On one hand, honoring the acts of people, no matter how big or small, always seem positive. And yet, when you honor the memory of the person themselves, That sadness, that mourning, feels almost as if it's a burden that I wouldn't want to wish on anybody. Mm -hmm. I would rather, in my passing, if I had many, if I had any accomplishments, those would be remembered. And the ones that the ones that had cause to mourn me, to forget all of it. That they would not remember that they knew me as me. So that they would be rid of the pain that my passing could have cost them. I think there's um, I think there's beauty in the pain of grief and that if someone wants to to live in that pain and feel that that's not a burden that's in a way an honor to 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 have that connection with someone to where you you feel that depth of pain and, and grief that they're passing. But at times it could, that beauty could turn into an obsession, could turn sure. into delusion. Tragic, tragic delusions. You could, but you can't control that. I think you should just try to be as good of a person as you can be. And I, I, I like to think that we're doing that. We're, we're making valiant efforts trying to help people. And I think some people will remember those actions. Hopefully we do some good to where maybe people will speak of us and think of us. But um, I think if people want to focus on the other piece, then let them do that. It's true. I feel in our current predicament and how we are right now, this is nothing that we could speak about. It is nothing that we could contemplate for. And whatever gods that we have allegiance to, I suppose, could only, are the only ones that have power that could potentially change how we view the world. Sure. But I don't think, I don't think it's but above us to have lofty dreams, to have goals to reach that could be absolutely insurmountable, but A peak that we can't ever climb to, but we always aspire to. I agree. Is this all just musings and thoughts due to the course of today, or is there something else bringing all of this in? Uh, Ptolemais is just going to look up into the sky just a little bit and just be like, 
Well, I mean, I can't swim, and I was close to drowning, and it was a little bit of a fright. It takes a bit out of us, you know? Of course. Uh, I'd like to make a deception check for that, too, if you, if I, if I could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. Insight. That is a 21. Yeah, and an 18. Oh, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and I'll just smile at Vara and just be like, you're doing a fine job, Vara. You didn't break any promise. And I feel utterly safe while I am traveling with you. Oh. And any of you, any. Well, okay, not really Agrios, but that's to be fair. I think I trust him as well. I trust him to be himself. Just like I trust all of you to be yourselves. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're a beautifully unique group. And I care for all of you for different reasons and different ways. And I admire little things about each of you. Um, I thank you. You and I, Adrastos, and everyone has just been very kind to me. Today was today was um, a bit of a low for me. I haven't let my emotions get me like that in a long time. But um, thank yes, you. I, um, I mentioned this to Agrios before, but there has to be lows. There has to. Or else, the tale is just too boring, and nobody will want to listen to it. Yes, well, the tales are told of us after we die, I guess. As you muse. I'm going to look um, at the sky with Tali and then glance over at his hair and see, it's been a while since I've kind of compared and looked has anything about it changed is it still about what was it it was like a five year difference slightly fast has anything changed since then is it still the same speed or does it indicate any kind of new information it looks about the same okay yep yeah. hmm. well your I know, that was anticlimactic, map. but you know. Oh, no, I, that's fine. <laughs> Your star map that you carry with you uh, has continued course in the same way that the natural stars do. So I think we're doing something right. That's good. I feel if there is anything wrong with my hair, It could mean nothing whatsoever, and it could mean just something wrong with me, but given as to how I think I might have achieved it, it wouldn't be anything good. Hmm. I'll keep that in mind. Well, um, who was next? Should we wake them? We should probably. Do so. I don't think we actually mentioned anything, but regardless, I think we should get some rest. Well, um, I'm gonna go ahead and wake Drastos for his watch, and um, he he cares about you a lot. I know. I know you had a moment between you and as captain. I felt it was necessary to just let that run its course, but um, I know he's already apologized a little bit, but. He, he's the type of person where he doesn't he doesn't get intense like that over enemies. He gets intense like that over friends. So, I hope you know that. I don't know if he'd be I able do. to voice that, but I'll do it for him. I, I think in, in times like these, there's no voice that needs to be heard. Only feelings need to be felt. And I feel them.
Go head down. I will wake Adrasto specifically. I watch then. <laughs> yes, if you're willing. Is she still angry with me? No, I was actually just about to say, um, I hope you don't mind, but I spoke a little on your behalf. I think, um, I don't know, I felt like I understood what you were trying to say earlier. And I... No, I, I, I meant what I said to Ptolemaeus. I, I've never been good with words, and you're both better at it than me, so you probably said what I wanted to better anyway. Well, it's been said, and... It's been welcomed. So, um, I'm actually going to go and wake up Tickeros. Mara will pass out. <laughs> she, like, as soon as you Same. get up from the hammock, she'll immediately, like, hop in the hammock and just be lights out immediately. She's so exhausted from the emotional <laughs> stress of the day. So, you two are standing watch together. Is that what I'm... Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, uh, let's have that perception check for. Let's How's have both your perception, you Tickeros? Let's have both of you I'm... do a perception check. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just kidding. No problem. <laughs> I'm so good at perception. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. 19. 16. 19 and 16, is that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Are you just passing the? I don't want to interfere if you're going to say something, but uh, are you just passing the time quietly, or um for a bit, and then um well, unless Tikra says something first, Adrasus is going to uh kind of take the telescope out. So you you know the stars a lot better than me. I I gazed at them a lot when I was traveling, but I've never navigated by them. I've always and have kept my eyes to the ground. Would you teach me what they are? Oh, yeah. I know about stars. I can teach you what I call them. I would Let's try. That. Yeah. And I can't recall. I don't think I've ever had a try at this special telescope either. So she's very excited to get her hands on it and have a look through. And yeah, just have a look around at the stars and point out anything that she would recall from her travels to date. And mm -hmm. as we're looking, um, he's just going to kind of casually say, I, I am a creature of passion and I think I did you and really all of the crew a disservice today by raising my voice in a moment of crisis, and I wanted to apologize. You, you always wear such a calm face, and you actually remind me of someone that I knew when I was younger. They had your love for life and your lust for adventure. And I think that's why it scares me so much. Well, who was this person? His name was Aramaz. He was, in a manner of speaking, my brother. We were raised together in the pack and in the pride, and he, he was my bonded packmate. We hunted together, and he always took the lead. I... I was the, the larger of the two of us, but he was the wiser. And so I was the muscle and he was the brain, as it were. Our, uh, our hunt master used to say, if you put the two of us together, we'd have one complete warrior. <laughs> um, he was a good fighter. But no longer here, I'm guessing. I'm not sure. Ooh. As you, mysterious. As you know, my clan was destroyed some time ago. But when I woke 
amongst the wreckage of my people, his body was missing. And when I heard the warrior talking about a minotaur with a leonin orphan, I, I allowed myself that most dangerous of emotions. I allowed myself to hope that perhaps Aramaz was still alive. It's why I very much wanted to go here, to find him. You are all my family and in the clan now, but he was the last true remnant of my clan, the last thing I remember. I think... I'm sorry, I'm, as I've said before, I'm terrible at words. I think I need him to be alive so that my failure isn't as complete. Yeah. I think I understand that. I mean, we're both looking for something. I don't like talking about it, but I have that dangerous emotion too. I hope every day that my husband Tavi is still alive, but I don't know if he is. So maybe we could take strength and look together. It's been a long time since I haven't been on my own. To have a family again, as Laura has said, it's frightening to me, but If the gods do see, see it fit to bless me after all of my many blasphemies against them, then I am glad they have blessed me with the five of you. The six of you, because Prime is my family as well now. Ah, oh, Prime. He's so cranky lately. But yes. Yes. I agree. I will endeavor to take strength from all of you rather than trying to bear the burden on my own. It's so wise. That is not a word that has been ever been used to describe me. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Adrastos, you so, hear... So, what's that one? <laughs> Adrastos, you hear a splash in the water, probably 50 yards from the boat. Seaward side. Okay, I will um, very gently, like, with, but with purpose, like, take the telescope back and I'll look to where the splash was. Okay. And you see what appears to be someone swimming in the general direction of the boat. Okay. Um, I'm going to whisper to Tikaros. Tikaros, wake the others. Okay. Someone's coming. And I'm going to kind of like shield up and I'm just going to take out a javelin and just kind of have it behind the shield. Okay. And I'm going to walk to closer to the boat and I'm going to say, late night for a swim. Name yourself. Oh, help. Uh, my, my boat sank. I'm, I didn't even see you there. I've just been trying to make it to the shore. I will tie a rope to the javelin and just kind of toss it out. So the javelin gives it a little bit more of like an outward go than just throwing a rope and okay. throw the rope in his general direction. Grab the rope, I'll pull you in. All right. But I'm still like... <laughs> All right. Uh, Tikros, are you staying on the deck or are you going down below? I think I would move to move to go downstairs but then i'd be so curious i'd kind of just pause <laughs> halfway and see what's happening <laughs> yeah so halfway yeah pause. all right, all right. <laughs> so adrastos you pull this person in um uh, and it is a male human male um looks like they've been in the water for a little while you can tell but as you assist them to i assume you assist them onto the boat i don't want to presuppose mm -hmm. okay as you assist them onto the boat and they climb out of the water, 
they are one of the ultimate specimens of human form that you have ever seen. And especially to you, Tikaros, there's definitely uh, reminds you of, of Tavi was a very strongly built, you know, person. So uh, climbs out of the water, long hair, just kind of flicks the water back out of it. Um, apparently they've been in the water a while. Their boat sank and they are unclothed. As he climbs onto the boat and, oh, thank you. I was, I was very concerned about that. Hello there. And he waves to Tikaros. Where are your clothes? Ah, uh, well, when the boat was going down, I was wearing fishing gear and there's no way I could swim and all that. So unfortunately, I apologize. I hope it does not offend you. And he kind of flexes a little bit. Oh no, this, this is all good. Mm. Certainly not an offense, but are you, can I get you something to wear, something to cover yourself? There are others on the boat who may take offense with your form. Well, I mean, I, I definitely do not wish to offend anyone. Very well. And I'll kind of um, go and find like just a sheet or something that I can just like wrap around him, just cover the bits. Mm -hmm. Well, are you, where are you finding this? Are you looking for something on deck or below deck? Yeah, I'm looking for something on deck. Okay. We'll say you find that. You know what? One thing that we know is there is there was a cover over the ballista. Okay. And he will take it and he will wrap it over his shoulders, but not wrap it around himself. Okay. I did to dress this wasn't going to make him do anything. So, uh... <laughs> Tell us more about your predicament, Brett. Oh, well, as mentioned, it was... Oh, please, don't make me speak so loud. Come over here. And he's waving to Tikaros. Yeah, all right. What's your name, anyway? Well, as you'd mentioned, uh, I had some issue on my boat, and... I... It's like... I don't know, it was almost like the gods were angry, and... Suddenly, I developed a leak in the boat, and it, it began to sink. And it's just a small rowboat. I, I had just come out from the shore a little ways to, to fish some. Yes. Roll an insight check. <laughs> I'm, feel, I'm feeling spiky today. Go ahead. <laughs> Tikaros doesn't care. She's just like, oh, yes, let's hear your story. He Ooh. went to roll it, and he vanished. Oh, there he is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. Uh, 19. All right. You, there's, you realize he's not once answered the question of what his name is. And he's talking about that he was in a boat that sank, and then he was a fisherman, and he was in fishing clothes but lost those, and then he was just in a rowboat. The story's not adding up to you. What's your name, friend? Oh. I don't know that you really need to know my name. I mean, we're all friends here, aren't we? Certainly, but first step to becoming friends is to know one's name. I'd be happy to share mine with you. I'd like it if you would uh, both uh, give me a wisdom saving throw, please. But! Oh, no. That checks out. Great big three. Well, nine. Excellent. And the rest <laughs> of us are asleep while this is happening, right? That is correct. Not yes. again. Yeah. I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> it's not me this time, at least. I'm asleep. <laughs> so I knew something was going to happen. Oh, no, totally sleeping. No. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> it's like the opposite of Cthulhu. <laughs> Just both of you. Uh, both of you suddenly consider this person to be quite an honest and friendly person and matter of fact you find them quite charming oh so handsome he is well thank you you are quite lovely yourself i i love your hair and he will take his hand and stroke your hair 
Oh. Yeah, have you seen it? Two different colors. Did any of us wake up? Were we able to be signaled or come up to the bag at all? It, there's nothing that's happened to wake you up. Uh, no one's come downstairs to wake you up, so I would I say no. just like an So okay, you know, well I'm right? I'm gonna play this as as a dress as a blade. You know, handsome man like yourself, the captain should really meet you. And I'm going to go to wake the captain. That would be that's excellent. What he thinks. Okay, that's, that's excellent. We'll see you back in a moment. I do want to remind everyone that satyrs have advantage on saving throws against magical effects. Oh, good point. Go for it. Oh, I forgot that one. Thank you nice for the reminder, one, Sam. Nice <laughs> one. And that is better. It is a 16. Very good. Is that so, enough? Uh, I think you still might find him charming, but not in the same way. Probably. <laughs> So def there is no effect on you. Okay. Matter of fact, you might feel a little bit like, like for a moment you get this flash, like somebody was trying to pull something over on you, but Adrastos seems to be fine with him. And Adrastos is going to go get the captain. So, you know, plus he likes your hair. I know. So I did actually you. brush it. I brushed it super good tonight too. Oh, I can't he's... wait for Varad to meet you. Yes, you have amazing eyes. And he's going to lean into you. Let me take them. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> <Page. laughs> so, you just seem like such a happy, and he's just going to keep leaning in closer. You know, the, the, the old movie thing, the getting close and making that look like he's definitely trying to get you to kiss. Oh, no, no, I'm not like that. I can, I can admire you, but sorry, my heart belongs to another. Oh, really? Who? I don't know if I should tell you because I'm good at secrets. I wouldn't want to put anything across that. But you are just such a lovely, lovely person. Yeah, I know. All right, so Adrastos, you went downstairs? And mm -hmm. I assume you're waking the captain. Anyone else? So I, I will wake everyone. So I'm I'm charmed by this person, right? Yes. Okay. Um. So Vara, you're going to see a very smiley address those. <laughs> Vara, Vara, wake up! You have to come beat this man who's just joined us on the boat. He's Wonderful and so polite and kind. Yeah, Barra just pushes past you. She's like, "What the fuck?" And so, like, she's like you'll be, you'll be like talking about this lovely human, and you just see Barra get a very angry look on her face and like stomp up to the top of the deck. And as soon as Barra reaches the top of the deck, he stops staring longingly into your eyes, Tikaros, and goes, Oh, this must be the captain. Hello, captain. Hello. My, you have amazing or hair. Are those tentacles? Why are you on my boat? Oh, I was having a, an issue at sea, and your kind people here, uh, hopefully, my boat sank. Mm -hmm. What was your issue? Just that your boat sank? Was yes. there a reason for it? Um, it took on water. I don't know why. Where are you headed? Um, well, I was headed back into shore, but fortunately your boat was here because I'm not sure I would have made it otherwise. Hmm. Well, I can bring you back to shore if you'd like. Uh, and you can wonderful. carry on with Thank wherever you. you're going. That would be great. Tell me, has we anyone ever a... mentioned how lovely your eyes are? Do we have a boat? Do we have like an extra rowboat type situation? Uh, no, you do not. No, okay. Um, no, I don't believe anyone's ever commented on my eyes. Um, and Vara like 
blinks weirdly like thinking about it because she has like cuttlefish eyes they're very strange so she's like this guy's fucking no <laughs> not up up. um so she... i'm waking up everyone else by the way okay uh. mm. um, what? so there's a couple methods of me getting you to shore the main one would be to bring our boat closer to shore or i can personally take you to shore um, oh, I would love that. I'd go anywhere with you. Sure. All right. <laughs> um, Vara will grab him, jump into the water, and turn into a shark. You grab him, and as you jump into the water, give me an acrobatics check. Wait a Nineteen. We matched. Oh. <laughs> what do you do with that? Well, he is going to, as you grab him and jump into the water, he is going to take it like you were attempting to grab him and hug him, and he is going to wrap his arms around you. Great. And he is going to plant a kiss on you as you dive oh. into the water and then shift into the shape of a and shark. And then I become a shark. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to need a constitution saving throw from you, please. All right. Now, con would be shark constitution, right? Uh, you can do it either way be because he would have okay. kissed you before you turned or as you were turning. That's the thing. This is a very odd <laughs> situation. Sure. Let me see. Yeah, it would be better to do as far. Um, oh, and save. Do, 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 do. That is a 19. Good rolls for Vara today. <laughs> that, is an, that is an excellent roll. Tam yeah. says he rolls a billion dice. Well, <laughs> you know, I got it. And this is why it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, it does matter because uh, since you saved, you're only going to take half of the psychic damage psychic damage Damn. so that is okay. going to that is going to be 10 psychic damage jeez okay cool am i like aware that that harmed me uh that that as you are turning into a shark i would think so i would think you would know that this thing kissed you and you just went and as you hit the water and turn into a shark this creature suddenly changes into a a shape. It's still humanoid, but it's made entirely of water. Oh. So it's like water standing out from the water that you're in. You can see that the difference is there. Does Vara recognize this at all? Um... Give me a history check, because this will be history. your knowledge of the sea, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's an eight. No. <laughs> cool. All right, I bite. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you are, so I'm going to eat you with my shark jaws. <laughs> um, no one else is near... Okay, how close would you say we are to the ship? Because I get pack tactics if I'm within five feet. Uh, you just jumped off of it, so... I, I mean, would I, be, like, right at the deck, I would imagine, Yeah, still I think, I think you're right there. Well. I'd say you're right yeah, beside so if, it. Yeah, so if you'll count that, then I have advantage. Absolutely. From being near my shark pack. <laughs> okay, I bite. Um, She's a biter. That, I think that populated. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Yes, that was amazing. Okay, and then I get advantage, so we roll again. But we can just take the first. Yeah. Oh, it was the same damage. So that's convenient. Um, so we have fourteen to bite. Uh, that is a miss. Dang. Cool. I snap at it. It does not quite land purchase. 
if you want, you can go ahead and put your token on the board too, because I put this one sure. on the board. So, shark we'll Vara <laughs> coming into no, no, motion. no, it's Vara shark. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. It's gonna okay. be it from now okay. on. Here I am with you attempting to bite this thing, it's just going to kind of shift a little bit out of the way. And did we determine how long did you, you said you were eight foot in length, correct? Eight feet, yes. Eight feet, okay. Mm, I think we'll do the other thing then. So once again, this creature is going to reach out and attempt to grab you and attempt to kiss you again. And I need you to make that constitution saving throw with advantage this time. And now I'm using sharp stats. How do I, how do I do, okay, so I have the, like beyond 20 things pulled up. So my con is plus one. So for a saving throw, would that just be plus one? Do I add? I have my proficiency, you, right? So it's, you should have a way to roll it next to your constitution that'll use your bonus. If you just click on it, I don't have a D&D &D Beyond uh, character sheet open at the moment. But usually there's a... Yeah, there's a saving throws right box on D&D Beyond. If you click that, that will be what saving throws you have. It's up near the top underneath your abilities. But I'm fine if you just for, roll and add a one to it. So, you know, for the shark. Away. Oh, for the shark. Oh, for the yeah, shark, I, I don't roll, know. I can roll like straight con. Just roll it and add it, one. I'm good. No uh, reason to make it complicated. Cool. Yeah, I just roll. I'll just roll whatever this con. I don't, I don't. Yeah. Cool. That was an 18. Okay. Uh, you don't take any damage this time. Uh, you do realize what it's doing. But when you don't respond to it in any way and it, and it fails to make contact with you it immediately moves its arm which becomes like a giant fist of water very similar to what was hitting the boat earlier but in a much smaller size and it is going to take two punches at you with water fists did i say sorry did i take any damage from that in any way uh not from the kiss from no. my concept okay great, great, great. okay so uh, that first one I know is going to miss because a nine is going to miss you horribly. Uh, the second one is a 24. So I assume that is going to be a hit. Shark. Yes. All right. Yeah, shark has AC of shark. And that is going to be four old damage as this old freezing damage. fist of water lands now into you. Vara has natural defense against cold. Would I still get that as shark? Yes. I'm going to say Sick. yes. Go for it. Sick. I have resistance. I was resistant with the tap, right? Z, Z, I already approved it. Keep your comment. <laughs> Go ahead. I said in this case, I'm going to let it. How did resistance taps it, right? Or no? Yep. Perfect. So it was four, so two. Sick. So Tikaros, uh, we probably need to get into initiative order at this point, but Tikaros, um, are you doing anything? You said you were on the side of the deck. You can obviously see what's happening here, that Vara's fighting the water. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> this is a firebolt coming in the direction of that thing. Oh. <laughs> hell yeah. Into the water? <laughs> Into the water. <laughs> at the creature. It's a bolt, so hopefully it'll hit them and not you. Yeah, we're going with that. 17 to hit. That is a hit. Absolutely. Yes. I missed my friend Vara. Oh, good roll. Nine damage. Nine. All right. You see as steam rises from the water and you see boiling on, on this creature that's underneath the water fighting with Vara as this fire hits and singes into the water a bit. The rest of you were waking up downstairs. I think Adrastos would have gotten everybody awake by now.
So I will say uh, that you are see- available to be on deck. So seeing Adrastos the way he is kind of different than than usual and also being someone that that likes to uh uh use use words and stuff to to uh, convince people magic or otherwise to do things uh differently <laughs> can i tell that something's drastically wrong with Adrastos? Would you say it's a drastically wrong? Oh. Oh, I'm, leaving. I'm leaving. All right, oh, cool. That, <laughs> <hurts. Later. laughs> that just hurts so bad. <laughs> you know what else hurts? Being charmed. Yeah, yeah I understand that. Yeah. Uh, regardless, I think I will. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, I will just be like, Adrastos, um, you should probably stay here for now. We're, we'll, we'll meet, we'll meet this person. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how, how wonderful this person is. Um, just, just get some rest. And, uh, uh, I'll go up deck first, not knowing what the heck is happening right now, but I'll get above deck and see what is happening, I guess. Uh, what you see at this point is you come up as you see Tikros shoot a firebolt <laughs> into the water. <laughs> I assume that's the thing that, that's the person that Adrasta was trying to convince us to come up and see. Get over here, Tolly! It's evil! It's killing Vara in the water! Oh, okay. Uh, I will go up to it, and I... Just, what, 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 what do we do with you? You... <laughs> give me a perception check, because I, I just want to see somebody who's coming up. You're going to see a shark in the water. And okay, can, I even, can we even see this thing? Sure, that's I guess, what I'm, that's what I'm wanting to see here. Is I'm... All right, let's that's find a, out. That's a 12. I'm going to say you don't, you don't see what it, you see the shark, but, and you see that it's obviously struggling with something, but you see water. And with all the thrashing and everything else, you probably wouldn't be able to make anything else out of it. Okay. I rolled a dirty 20. <laughs> Agrios, on the other hand, with his keen centaur eyes uh, and a little bit different angle is going to see where kind of like hair would be, you know, it's a different kind of a shade of the water, more, more foamy and boily in that area. So you make that out, Agrius. You can definitely see that there's something there. Yes, Adrastos. Is there any way that I'm going to shake this off? Uh, you are charmed. What? <laughs> I, I know, I know, I am charmed, but I'm asking as the player: Will will time give me time to shake this off, or am I just sitting out this battle? Uh, it's what you want to do. If you come back up onto oh. the uh, the deck, if with me, uh, not we can play anything, it out and see. So yeah, with me not seeing anything, I will immediately go back to Adrastos, and I'll just be like, Adrastos, I don't see anything at any person. Um, but Vara needs your help right now, so no words. Just <laughs> well, I'm gonna you, let you, Agrius... them at, you activated the Adrastos button. <laughs> I'm gonna let Agrius go ahead of you because I'm I'm actually writing down the order you guys are doing in, in things yeah, and taking that as an initiative. Fine. So Agrius, I want to cast a second level guiding bolt. Okay. Right. Uh, so that would normally be damn it i have to use it already huh all right i'm gonna go ahead and use my channel divinity on that to make it a 19 okay (laughs) instead of a nine that's a hit Uh uh-huh i'm glad um let me take this off so that i'm gonna roll what five d6 let me get all my d6s Uh, 
That is 17 radiant damage in the next attack roll made against this target before the end of my next turn has advantage. Wow, all right. All right. And that's going to be, uh, uh, I'm just going to say, I have no idea what's going on. But I guess we're fighting. I'm not trying uh, to kill the shark, right? Is that? Not the shark. Not the shark. The shark is worse. <laughs> okay. Right. Kill the shark. Poor shark is good this time. <laughs> Okay, Adrastos, where you you are coming up on deck because you heard Vara needs you, mm -hmm. and you see uh, Tikaros and Agrios uh, over on the side of the deck, looking over the side, uh, casting spells, doing things. If you so, run up to the edge, yes, and I see. I'm assuming. Do I see? Do I need to roll perception to see if I see Vara fighting this? Give water me, monster? give me perception. Yes. Um, not great. Stop rolling these dice. Eight. Yeah. Uh, you you see the shark in the water. You don't know exactly what they are fighting, but you also notice the person you rescued isn't there. Okay. So you're a bit concerned about what happened to the person uh, they rescued. Prime is going to come up after Adrastos, and he's going to walk up to Agrios, and he's going to say, I do. Um, does he have any weapons? No. If Agrios can take any actions, even something just Completely incidental, I don't know. He's going to take one of his javelins and hand it to him. Okay. He'll he'll take it. Uh and he'll he's he sees the thing in the water. He sees the shark as well. And he goes Not the shark. The other thing. Uh, but what do I what do I throw Hold it on. like no, this? No, no, no. Before, before you have a chance to say it, <laughs> you've handed him a weapon. I have. Remember, he rolls with advantage if he attacks. Although, if he's if he has disadvantage, then it cancels out, I guess. He takes the weapon in both hands, jumps over the side of the ship with it, huh. well, holding it in front of him. And he does get advantage, so I'm going to give him that advantage. That is a hit. You said it was a javelin? It is a javelin. 1d6 plus strength. Yeah. He's going to hit and hit with this javelin and go through, and he's going to do a whopping uh, <clears throat> three points of damage. Heck yeah! <laughs> with okay. this javelin, go so. prime. Uh, but he is going to continue sinking past once he has done that. So <laughs> you're not too far from the shore, but he is going to continue to sink. And with that. Vara. Cool. So with this person, so are they like genuinely like a, a water-based creature? Or do they just look like water? From what you can yeah, give me a perception. Or yeah, perception in this case. Shark perception. Oh, Vara perception of shark. 19. Very perceptive today. You are very perceptive today. Um, Let's see. We're going to get on land again, and Vara's going to just turn into fucking nothing again. <laughs> You're like, ah! As you analyze this, um, you're familiar with water elementals. This is a little bit different, but very similar. Um, it, kind of a water fae type of creature. Okay. So... More like a, a nymph type of thing, uh, but still, yes, made of made of water for the most part. But there's Can, an energy holding that water together. 
can I shave that water? Oh, that is an interesting question. If I were, if Probably I were not. drop shark form, could I just, could I just like blood bend this thing? Like, it's a, <laughs> well, like since, Avatar, like. <laughs> I, I, what part of me wants to go, yes, but the other part of me is going, it's more of a fake creature. Sure. No, that makes sense. So uh, I think I'm going to have to say no on that one as much as I hate Very it, because that would be really cool. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is a it is a creature. Also, human beings have a lot of like a lot of yeah, our bodies yeah, are made up of yeah. water. If you can't shape that, then yeah. yeah, no, that makes sense. Cool. Well, I shark bite. Er, ah, okay. I have, we have not moved from the side of the ship, right? So I'm still getting no. You're right there. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So I will bite twice. We can take the first damage. I'm just rolling. Let me see. Okay, fifteen. That's your hit. Uh, yes. That is a hit. Yay! And what's the damage on that? That would be four piercing. Four piercing. Okay. Just painful because it's like one technically rolled with nine piercing, but that wasn't <laughs> tragic. Four piercing. And uh -huh. um, I think that's it. The shark's just kind of menacingly er, bite. All right. I guess sharks don't growl. It's making whatever sounds <laughs> sharks make when they're angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, I got too many dice in there. Hold on just a minute. Ominously singing. Somehow that happened. Bara shark. Bara do, do, shark. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the creature is again going to hand to him. Exactly, yeah. Oh, crazy. Uh, first was a 15. Bara, does that hit a 15? Uh, yes, it sure does. Ugh, I'm very sorry to hear that. <laughs> that is going to be. Fourteen. Oh, huge, huge clarification point. Um, when I took those psychic damage points, I took it as Vara, right? Yes. And then earlier, when I took the two damage, I took that as Shark. Yes. Okay. I'm so I'm still so new to Druid, so I go through Shark's hit points. You go through the I, Shark first, and then you'll revert shape. Yeah. Revert. Okay, great. So I took two already. Okay. All right, so that is going to be 14 cold damage. 14 cold, which we've decided I'll have, so seven. And then I'm going to have to say the words I really hate to say for the second okay. attack, which is nat 20. Okay. <laughs> Vara may no longer be shark. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, I believe we said uh, we're doing uh, max damage plus die roll, correct? I think so. That yeah. sounds right. It's in, we have it pinned somewhere, huh? I feel, I feel really bad saying this. That's going to be 18 cold damage to begin with before I roll. Okay, halved. And another, oh, another eight. So not too bad. So another four halved. That takes me out of shark form. Exact number, too. Cool. There's just like a little popping noise. <laughs> Bar's like, oh. <laughs> Adrastos. You see Vara suddenly. Oh, did you? You stayed by the deck, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. So uh, you see Vara plop back into uh, Vara form from the shark. And you can definitely tell she's fighting something in the water. But I can't see it. Uh, I, I would say at this point you can tell because you've, okay. you've observed the So, so Vara the is fighting fight. something in the water, and the beautiful yeah. man that I rescued from the ocean has vanished from the boat. There is only one place I can imagine this beautiful man has gone. This motherfucker is fighting both of them, and I'm going to stab it. <laughs> <laughs> so just... Give, uh, me, give me a uh, wisdom saving throw. No, don't make me do that, Tam. Well, I got to see if you can break the charm. Uh, 
okay, I'm not going to roll my dice because my dice have not been kind to me. <laughs> I'm going to try the digital dice and see if it's better. They've been working for me today, which is weird because normally they're very 14. Mean. That is good enough. Okay, so now what has replaced this charm and wonder at this beautiful thing is absolute mind numbing rage that someone tried and, to take and, over his. And you absolutely know that this, that man is this thing and it did that to you. Okay. Uh, yes. So there is going to be a loud roar as I leap from the boat. I, I really don't know how I'm going to do this. I, I don't know how I'm going to narrate this, but you know what? He didn't expect me to be coming. He thought I was charmed. I'm going to use my bonus action to fainting attack to give myself advantage with this falling sword. Um... So this is going to be my first use of the superiority die. Don't ask me how I did this, but I wrote down your name when I meant to write Tikaros. So I have this out of order. It should have been Tikaros going next. So well, I'm going to put well, you on hold, Adrastos. We're going to save what you got, but I'm going to put you on okay. hold because I'm an idiot. Tikaros, you're up. Oh, paused mid massive attack of goodness. I like That's okay. I'm just frozen just, in the air. <laughs> yeah, I just love that thought of Adrastos like leaping up as Tikaros does this thing. All right. So Tikaros is going to be brave. She is going to use her action. She's going to race over to wherever there's a rope and she's going to tie it around something so it can be pulled up. She's going to grab the rope. And she's going to go leap into the water and try and land near where she saw um, Vara go in. Oh, no, she can see Vara. She can see yeah, Vara can see still. Vara. Yeah. She's all right. She's going to run with the rope, jump into the water near Vara. Then I'll just get through it all, Tam, and then you can say yay or nay. <laughs> she's going to burn two of her sorcery points to cast on Vara protection from evil and good as she jumps into the water with this rope, lands near Vara, hopefully, and gets to touching distance and just a little shower of sparks will hopefully erupt from her the hand. Only she does the so. only thing I'm going to put on that is because you're doing so much in this is give me an acrobatics for being able to oh, yeah. tie well, this thing off and hit it. your mark. This is the hero moment. <laughs> this is it. Come on, dice. <laughs> no, I get to add things. Plus three <laughs> makes it a 12. It's a 12. Good enough. Good enough. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so you sail over, you hit the water, you go down and you touch Vara. And you have now given her protection from good and evil. Nice. This means if this creature is aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, or undead, it will have disadvantage on attack rolls against you now, Vara. And you sick. can't be charmed. Okay. And I'm in the water with the rope, questioning <laughs> my life choices. <laughs> All right. Ptolemaeus, you had uh, moved away, but it is your turn. Uh, I'm going to run back out and after, well, I'll, I'll be running after. Uh, after Adrastos in that sense anyways. So the first thing is as Adrastos is running through down there, can I see I can I can see the creature now, right? It's yes. like Yeah, I'm gonna say attacking. everybody can make it out at this point. Okay. There's enough Um room. I think the first thing I'll do for it is uh Vara coming out of the shark form, does she look hurt in any way? Uh, Vara was injured initially, psychically, um, so she probably looks like she's in pain a little bit, but she's not, like, terribly hurting. The shark form, obviously, got very bloody very quickly, but, uh, okay. Vara form looks okay. She definitely looks, like, not happy and a little bit injured, but she's fine. Uh, I'll just do a healing word anyways. Okay. And just kind of, kind of whisper and blow some, some air towards her and uh it's gonna be seven points of healing i thought i thought you were gonna say blow some kisses and i was like no no, <laughs> no, 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 more. no more kisses <laughs> no, no kisses no kisses no kisses seven 
That's not my MO. Seven. Uh, cool. We're all traumatized so by affection now. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, um, I think you said earlier, and I know you're new to playing a druid, that yeah, the damage you took exactly exhausted the HP of the shark, right? It did. Yes. Okay, because if it goes over that, the druid form takes the additional damage. So yes, just FYI no, Z to the that, future. Z oh, we did. Too, Thank so you, perfect. Z. Yeah, I didn't see it. Um, so. but yeah, no, it was exact, so it was perfect. Cool. All Didn't right. Have to do that. <laughs> All right. So you you got your wee bit of healing there. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I'll just keep keep a lookout, just as always, uh, staring at the creature. But, <laughs> All right. Yeah. Agrios. Uh, let's see. What am I gonna do? So they're like, how many of my friends are surrounding this thing now? Uh, Tikaros and Vara are in the water. Prime is underneath it, sinking to the bottom. Is so it Drossos there yet? Not yet. On my turn, I'm going to be dive bombing, <laughs> but it's not my turn yet. All right. So he gets already. He gets, already gets dis. I can tell that uh, Tikaros has sort of protected Vara in some way, right? Yeah, I, I would. Well, you saw her lay hands on her, and maybe Vara looks a little bit better than she did. Less, yeah, less it would have been like a little shower of sparks that came yeah. out. Like you've seen Tikaros's spells do these little showery star sparks. You would have seen that too. Okay. Well, then I'm going to try and protect Tikaros. I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on her. And her AC raises by two. Amazing. Excellent. And then with my bonus action, I am going to toll the dead. You know how I do. I'm beating on the yeah, shield. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I would say I would say for the shield of faith, it would actually be like the actual coming from the actual shield, like maybe the emblem of Mogus lights up and a little beam shoots out and sort of seems to resonate around or, or not resonate, but like, you know, radiate around uh Tikaros. Um and yeah. So, Toll the Dead, he rolls, I believe, a con saving throw? Wisdom save. Sorry, wisdom save. My bad. No problem. Uh, that is an 18. Oh, okay. Well, then he succeeds and, and, and not, nothing happens. Sorry. Good dice. Good, dice. Good boy. It, Sorry. So Sorry. it goes. All right, uh, but he does, he does see Prime just sort of plunging down into the water and goes, no. Oh. That's another way to do it. And addressed us. Okay, so the suspended action now happens. Um, how's a 25 <laughs> look? Uh, amazing. Okay, cool. So because that was a fainting attack, I get to add an additional B8. Awesome. So that'll be... Bunches of damage. That is bunches of damage. That is 20 damage. Wow. Of the because slashing the, variety. Slashing, thank you. Because Adrastos does not like to be messed with. He doesn't like when his friends are messed with. Vara specifically, this man has checked all the boxes. <laughs> um, and now I'm in the water and close. So I am going to go ahead and burn my action surge. Awesome. And swing again. This does not okay. get advantage because I can't faint twice, unfortunately. Uh, that will not do it. All right. Very good. I just, I, I math. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Prime is going to settle to the bottom, which is going to put him at the distance you are from the shore about 20 feet below everyone else so he's just going to look up and turn and start walking his way up because there's <laughs> not much else he can do <laughs> and that brings us back to vara cool i am now in vara form let's see My spells work underwater. Is that is that impacted at all? I think so. I think I've looked into this, and it's fine as long as you can like. Well, even if you can't 
breathe underwater. You lose a little breath, but it's not a big deal. I think I'm going to go ahead and use Thunder Wave. I will point out that Tikaros and Agrios are near you. Oh. I'm not near you. They jumped in the water too. Oh, right. That was Adrastos. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Agri I'm sorry, Adrastos. It's the A team. They're con That's it's fair. confusing. A so. team. <laughs> Dun, 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 completely dun, completely dun, dun, forgot that Tigris just dun, 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 dun. So there isn't a feasible because what it's a like fool that comes to a rescue. And and I I I, I hate the fact that I reminded you, but I would feel bad if I didn't. Each creature in a 15 foot cube. Yeah, so that wouldn't work, huh? All of my spells I like need to be far away. So this is well, I mean, just, she she may do really um, well on her uh, saving throw. You never know. That's okay. Um, I'll just use guiding bolts. That'll be fun. I cast guiding bolts upon me. Um, it did the damage. I don't know if it rolled the hit. What was the? Uh, okay, it, it looks a like fifteen it looks, to hit. Yeah, it's a fifteen to hit, so that hits. And it, I did it at second level, so it does eighteen radiant damage. Eighteen radiant, awesome. And this this creature, where it where it's always been water formed, it now seems to be a thinner water. It it's taken a lot of damage apparently, and it where it had that distinction between you know the water around it and itself. It seems to have thinned out quite a bit, almost as though it's bleeding out its own water into the water of oh, cool. the bay. Cool. Yeah, and I, I imagine like all my spells are like more vibrant in water. Um, so it was very much this like very blinding streak that just kind of hit it. All right. Cool. Okay, cool. And that'll be me. I'll just I'll stand my ground. I won't swim anywhere. Right, and Vara can breathe underwater, so she's five in. She'll be partially submerged at, at, at whatever level it's at. All right. At this point, the creature kind of uh, sees that things aren't going very well. And I am going to need a perception check from each of you so I can determine if you see what happens next. Natural 20. That's nice. the second one of the night. Wow. These dice are amazing. 11 for me. Okay. That's a 20, but not natural. Okay. All right. Seven. Okay. This is one where you, you're, you know, you're perceiving well, that means you're actually going to see it. So you may hate me for this. <laughs> Vara? My turn, or I'm being... Uh, uh, have you rolled? Have you rolled your uh, perception? Sorry. Oh, my perception. I'm so sorry. I was talking That's all right. Talking to Z is throwing so much information at us. <laughs> trying to absorb it. Z, stop um, a minute. Stop a minute. <laughs> my perception is 25. <laughs> That's okay. another net 20. You got a net 20 God. as well. God. So the creature stops for a moment, raises its hand, and you see it says something because the water, you know, air goes out through there and it some words that you you don't understand. It's a very different language that you hear, but just above the water forms this cube of 30 foot cube. And these sparkling lights and patterns alternate inside of it and it's everyone except agros agrios it's like you can't take your eyes off this for a moment and i'm going to need a wisdom saving throw from each of you um tigros you get to do advantage. this with advantage so. yeah. he has a butt <laughs> he is Not a butt 
I got an 11. That's a 17. Fail. That's a pass. 21. That's a pass. 24. What does that address to us? I, it's a fail is what it is. Okay, so we got two fails and two passes. So Adrastos and Vara, you, uh, you look at this creature and you, you look at this thing in the sky and suddenly you're so distracted by that, you find yourself just stuck there staring at it with no other thought in your mind. You are completely focused on what is happening there. Take Rose, wait, wait, is it charm, fraternal or possessed? Yes, but you, you succeeded. But Vara has protection from evil and good. So oh, you're right. Be able to. You are right. Vara, yeah. your attention comes back to this. So you and Tikaros are both fully Yay. in attention near this creature as it does this and then begins to try to swim away. So oh. in that case, the two of you have an attack of opportunity. Heck yeah! yeah. It has That's to be a me melee attack. Yes. Yeah, it's got to be melee attack. That's fine. I now I got to look and see what Z's been sending while you're doing your melee attacks. So <laughs> is that just a when making a melee attack, a creature that doesn't have a swimming speed? But if we do have a swimming speed, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Sick. All right. Yeah, swimming. we've we've actually run into this before. The last time you guys were fighting in water, so I'm pretty I'm pretty certain I have a swimming speed as a trident. I don't know where they'd be listed. Ooh, I pull out a dagger, and I think probably miss with it, my seven. Yeah, that's gonna miss. So where would Dang. I know if I have a swim speed? You have a swim speed of thirty feet. Okay, sick. I slice. I have a little scimitar that I keep with me, so I will go ahead and slice at it. And that's a seven as well. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> both of both of those miss as the creature uh, tries to swim away. I gotta find out which direction it goes. So uh, I'm gonna flip a coin here. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's see. It's trying to swim away. Tikaros, you're up. Oh, if it's within 120 feet, I can try firebolting it. It is. Which I would do. It is trying yeah. to get away from you, so absolutely you can. 21. That's a to hit. To hit with a firebolt. Take some fire damage. A great big two points of fire damage. Oh, boy, yes, two points. It's it was not hey, looking too good to be. It was not looking good to begin with, so that definitely uh, has hurt. Has hurt it quite a bit. All right, Olimaeus. Uh Is it within sixty feet of me? Yes. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna do this again, where I will, with the same uh, whisperings of of words, do both. Um, as my action, I will use dissonant whispers. Okay. <laughs> but with the same the same words, uh, I will use as my bonus action unsettling words to use my bardic inspiration, and I'm gonna roll the d6, and it is a four. So for the saving, the wisdom saving throw that you need for the dissonant whispers is my uh, subtracts four from it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it, it, I didn't say it correctly. Well. That's all right. I'm just trying to keep up with the math. And also going, did you cast a spell in a cantrip or what all did you do here? So. Oh, the other one is an ability. It's not a cantrip. Yeah, not a cantrip. Yeah, it's anything, not a cantrip so. So. Yeah. Uh, what is my target? 14. Failed. Great. Takes four, six, eight damage. That sucks. All right. It's eight damage. Yeah. Eight psychic damage. Yep. Almost catching up to Vara on the psychic damage there. Uh, the creature looks very shaken. In fact, for a moment, it loses form. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's, I think that's it. All right. 
Agrios. It is moving uh, away. Okay. Uh, it is moving away. Uh, it's actually moving uh, in a direction towards Prime. But oh. it is moving away from the fight with uh, Vara and everyone else. How far away is it at this point? Uh, it's still going to be within 60 feet of you. I think I might oh, have messed okay, up. Sorry, hold on. I think I might have messed up. I'm going to be the one to be screwing screwing people over again. Uh, <laughs> but I did use Dissonant Whispers. That also means that the creature, if he ha it has a reaction, it has to move its speed away from me with his reaction. And it would still be doing that, so yeah. that would be moving away from you. Oh, no, as, like, okay, immediately as a reaction is what it says. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's going right, to that's so. going to put it outside of uh, that 60 feet for Agrios. Okay, it's outside However. of 60 feet. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, I can still hit it with a guiding bolt. Yeah, it's it, it would be Yeah, it's going to be about 90 feet from you at this point if it moves its full speed away from you. Yeah, guiding bolt goes to 120. So yeah. I'm going to go for broke with a second level guiding bolt. Please hit. Worked well for me. Uh Oh shit, I didn't have my glasses on. Kraken. What happens what happens if I roll a 20? And you rolled a nat 20? I, I rolled a Kraken on a Kraken die. That's 20. Yay. Nice. Yeah. Uh what's the max damage for this? What's the max damage for a second level guiding bolt? Uh-huh. Oh my god. It's like punches. Isn't it? It's 30. Uh that's it. It's it's gone. This is destroyed <laughs> that's why i was saying i mean it, it didn't have that much Ooh. left so guiding bolt won the fight for us this dude. thing this Go this ahead. thing just this thing just disperses into the water so there's like this this foamy skin that just kind of and turns to bubbles and fades away yeah uh, i kind of wish it escaped i want to see what would have happened <laughs> <laughs> Can I see Prime? I've got the rope in the yeah, water. Yeah, Prime's, and I Prime's take it sinking. Down to Prime's, you. Prime's, Prime's no, gonna Prime's die. Prime's actually gonna the... Prime, no. Prime's walking oh, his way out. That's right. He was walking oh, his okay. way out the side. Yeah. So. All right. Okay. I wasn't sure how far, how how deep, like how it was, how how it was far twenty feet. It was twenty feet below all the other action that was happening. So mm -hmm. he's just walking. Right. Up, I, I and wasn't you guys sure if he were... was just going to keep sinking into the depths of the ocean. No, you guys are in okay. the bay near the mouth of the river. Oh, we're so. at a bay. That's right. We're yeah. at a bay. Yeah. So. Oh, we're okay. <laughs> so we're so fine. he's 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 walking his way up to the side of it, and he's going to walk out of the water. Javelin still in both hands. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote did that a time or two in our past campaign. That's so fun. <laughs> Prime. Yes, I'm proud of you. Oh. I did very little. But you did something. <laughs> That's a good first step. And he's going to look and go, I'm not quite sure how to make it back to the boat. Oh. Mm, good point. I can no longer be shark. So it's not an option. <laughs> I'll just stay here and sit on the beach and make a fire and just be ultimately as useful as right, I have. Eeyore. Oh, we should. I was thinking more of, have... you know, Marvin from. Oh, yeah. Oh, fair enough. Guy. Yeah. Well, yeah. We should have some kind of um, life preserver, right? On the ship? Some kind of thing like that? Life. Don't talk to me about life. <laughs> okay. There's nothing about life that's worth preserving. Jeez. Bara just starts yeah. banging her head on the side of the ship. Can somebody pull me in? I'm really wet and tired. 
Yeah, do we have some kind of life preserver or anything, or should we just uh, leave no, there? no? This this is this is this is prior to OSHA and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, very no. fair, fair point. Um, uh, prime in the morning, I can be a shark again. <laughs> you just want to wait. <laughs> you know, just put the spear and the the javelin in the ground and sit down and go. That's fine. Or we could camp out on the beach. All of us can go to Prime. Let's go to Prime. I'm it's Prime there, time! Right? How much yeah. closer can oh, I move shit. the ship like before it becomes a potential beaching issue? Uh, you're in a uh, riverboat, so it's shallow draft, so you can get in very close. Cool. I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and instruct everyone to do that, and we'll get as close as we can. Okay. So a few of you make it back. Uh, any of you just swim into shore because you're not that far from it? Yeah, I'm already in the water, so I would swim. Okay. I'm already wet. Yeah, I guess I'll just swim to shore. I guess Ptolemaeus is the only one, and Agrios are the only ones who are still on the the boat. That's all right. I'm gonna leave the boat. I don't want to be on the boat anymore. Ptolemaeus, <laughs> you're my rowing crew. <laughs> Ptolemaeus, bring the boat oh, in. And Ari. <laughs> there we go. Oh, Good luck, Ptolemaeus. Oh. No, I'm definitely waking up. All right, no, I'm definitely waking her up. I'll <laughs> just go you know over. Yeah. Agrios is going to pat Ptolemaeus on the shoulder, and in doing so, he's going to cast Enhance Ability and give oh, him no, some strength. Nice. Give him oh, both strength. Nice. You have advantage Ptolemaeus on strength just gets swole. <laughs> All right. No, I will totally make More that like Swolemaeus. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Beautiful. I got a oh million Lord. of them today. Oh, Lord. Oh. Well, I'm sorry. We ran a lot over this evening, but, uh, okay. hey, you know. But, yeah, Ptolemais, let's see if you can get this boat to shore. Holly row the boat to shore. Ptolemais. That is a 19. Wow. So. He rose yeah, the hell I out of that work. boat. It worked. Definitely worked. Awesome. All right. So you get the boat in the shore. You guys are able to tie it off. And uh, yeah, Prime's there sitting and uh, just staring at all of you. Hello, Prime. And uh, we're, we're sitting. <laughs> because you are into the second watch, it's probably about one o'clock in the morning at this point. So what are your plans? I would like to go back to sleep first. Yeah, I'm going back to sleep. Okay. Yeah. That's probably a good idea, actually. All yep. of you will be able to complete a long rest. That's good. Yeah. And it's good because I used all of my second level spell slots <laughs> and one of my first level. And uh, I would also like to let you know that when you wake up in the morning, you feel especially refreshed and empowered. Yay! As oh. your skills have enhanced and your abilities have increased, and you advance Finally. to the next level. 